Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everybody. Welcome on back to a little randomized perfection fun time to, to help try and beat the cold temperatures that are plaguing many parts of the of at least of at least my surrounding area right now. How cold is it for me? It is currently, let me check my temperature app. Um, where are we at? Minus 29. It is currently minus 29. It's gonna be a low of minus 32 today. With wind chill, feels like minus 41. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's yeah, pretty pretty much the same, Benny. Benny, we were in the same boat, you and I. Minus 29 Calvin? I don't think so. I hope not. I don't think. I think Calvin doesn't go into the minus though. So if you're at minus 29 Kelvin, it's not Calvin. It's Kelvin. <laughs> Kelvin. Then it's uh, then you got bigger problems. What is that in Fahrenheit? Uh, let me, let me Google it, honestly. Let's see. Minus 29 Celsius in Fahrenheit. Can I spell Fahrenheit correctly? It is minus 20.2 degrees, according to to the most prevalent Google result. So about, about minus, minus 20. Uh, with wind chill, it gets down to minus 40, which is also minus 40 Fahrenheit, so. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a, it's a cold one. We're in a bit of a cold snap. Tomorrow's supposed to be a bit colder, too. And then I think we're going to start getting a bit warmer from then on in, but. Nearly 70 degrees Fahrenheit where you are. Weirdly warm. We had a pretty, we had a pretty warm December, for sure. It was it was an unusually warm December, and now we're into January. It's it's back to business as usual, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it it probably doesn't get near this cold in like a lot of places that people live. Rightfully, rightfully so. I'm, I I I would not wish these temperatures on anybody. Like I am I'm used to them because you know it usually happens at least like once a year that you get down to like the minus thirties around here. Um, but just because I'm used to them doesn't mean I necessarily like them. I'd, I'd rather avoid these temperatures if I can, but we'll make do. At least, I'm at least happy we have, you know, the infrastructure to help, you know, maintain it and manage it. <laughs> it's pretty rough, though. Only just remember the goal right before the stream. Good shout-out. Good shout-out, by the way. Thank you, Miss Palindrome, for that. I need, I need to, need to drop an exclamation point goal here. Get Nightbot to stop telling you to like the stream and to start telling you that we need to befriend Linus today. That is our current goal. Goal 193. There's a chance, depending on how fast we go through this befriending goal, that we get to goal 200 today. I don't know. I'm not going to make any promises, but, but I'll do my best. <laughs> hey there, Freya. Welcome on in. Antifa support, hello, hello. Good to see you. Either way, I digress. If we're going to get through this goal today, we got to get started here with everyone's favorite segment, at least one of my favorite segments, new fan art. We got some new fan art to share today. Let me show you some of the beautiful fan art that our lovely, amazing community has whipped up, starting with Boom. This amazing piece from Etway over on the Discord. <laughs> Absolutely just gobsmacked at this. This is so good. I love this. The, perf the perfect trio of Stardew characters. You got Beatrix, Flip, and Chloe all together in one place. <laughs> you also got Flop. You got Pi. Timby was, un was unfortunately not able to make it, but that's okay. <laughs> It's so good, right? I love all the little details here. You got, you know, Flip's bright green neon pants. You got Beatrix with pie there. You got Chloe with her copper axe and the fishing rod. And it's it's so well done. So, so good. Thank you. Thank you, Etway, for this one. This is really nice. <laughs> one of the first people that don't pronounce my name wrong. Freya? <laughs> Do people say, like, Freja? Or something like that. I, I see the J and, you know, I, I understand the context around that. Maybe it's just because I've, like, learned. But <laughs> either way, happy to. Very gorgeous piece of fan art. Thank you. Thank you, Etway, for this one. 
And the other piece of fan art we got today, we have this one from the Mad Hatter over on the Discord. Little Beatrix in her classic minor duds from way back early on in the challenge when she didn't have nearly as prolific of a wardrobe. This was the classic Beatrix look. She's ready to head off to the mines, do some geode farming. <laughs> it's, it's This is very good, too. Some amazing pieces of fan art. That's for sure. This is, this is really nice. I love this. I love this rendition of Beatrix. I love seeing all the different art styles that people come up with. Like no two art styles are the same, and that's uh, it's always so, so, so cool to see all these different talents on display in such different ways. Very well done to the Mad Hatter. Thank you for this fan art, and thank you to all the fan artists who have contributed fan art over the past couple of years of the streams. If you'd like to share your own fan art in some capacity. Head on over to the Discord server, exclamation point Discord, or there is the Discord link in the in the description below the stream. There's a fan art channel there. Let us know how you want to be credited, if you want to be credited. And all that good stuff. I'm always happy to see it. Very, very, it, it never gets old. From the first time I got a piece of fan art to, to this most recent couple, I'm always just so happy and humbled to, to see my little characters and my little stream lore brought to life in such a such an amazing way so thank you thank you for this all right can't wait for the linus befriending we'll hold your horses there benny dreamly because before we start befriending linus we got to get through our dailies we got our daily poke doku and our daily puff fertile i gotta i gotta maintain my streaks here in order to to satisfy the dopamine receptors of my brain. So let me go ahead and load up our dailies here. Start with start with our Poke Doku, because no one knows what the heck is going on in it except for me. This one's just just for me personally. <laughs> you gotta do it for yourself sometimes, and this is one of those times. Alright, today's puzzle on Poke Doku. Let's start. Grass fairy type. Mine immediately goes to cottony. Cottony slash Whimsicott. I feel like Whimsicott's going to be more prevalent of a guess, so we'll go Cottony. 15.3%, not bad. Fairy Steel type. Fairy Steel type. I mean, they're definitely... There's there's a couple options, I think, but I, I'm drawing a blank on the Fairy Steel type right now. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to go uh, Klefki. Klefki on this one. The keychain Pokemon. The key ring Pokemon, even. <laughs> the Pokemon that you look at it and, the, and you suddenly understand they must be running out of ideas, but little did you know this was three generations ago that they came up with this Pokemon. They're not running out of ideas. I actually love Klefki. I think it's a fun design. Fairy mythical Pokemon. Mythical and legendary are distinct categories. A, myth, a mythical fairy type Pokemon. I feel like you got to go Diancie on this one, isn't that? Is Di Diancie's mythical, right? Diancie Mega. You can go Diancie Mega. Perfect. Okay. Grass Fighting. What is a Grass Fighting type? Wouldn't that be Chestnut? This might be the most common pick because it's a starter, but it's nineteen point five percent. That's fine by me. Uh, I guess I could have done Verizion as well. Verizion wouldn't have been a bad choice. Fighting Steel. Mind immediately goes to Lucario, but Lucario is such a popular Pokemon. Is there is there another Fighting Steel type that I could go with? Is Co wait is Cobalion Fighting Steel? Cobalion, I think you're Fighting Steel, right? Yeah, okay. I feel like that's probably a bit more of a deep cut than than Lucario would be. Fighting Mythical Pokemon. Um, the two that come to mind. There might be more than this, but that you got Keldeo and you've got Marshadow. Which do I think is more or less popular? I feel like Keldeo, Keldeo has like multiple forms, doesn't it? I'm gonna go Marshadow on this one though. Marshadow, I, I'm pretty sure you're mythical. 51% should have gone Keldeo. Shoot. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. At least we got it. At least we got it right, even if it's not the like, you know, most unique of all answers. Grass type from Hoenn. I mean, you got so many different options here. People probably default to the grass starter, Trico. Um, but you can, we gotta branch out a little bit further from there. How do we feel about... I'm gonna go, I'm gonna give you a Roselia on this one. Roselia. 5.3%, I'll take that. A Steel type from Hoenn. I mean, Metagross is a pretty, pretty typical answer there. How about we go Mega Mawile, though? Mega Mawile. 
4.9% seems fine to me. A mythical Pokemon from Hoenn? There's only like... Does, does Deoxys count as mythical? Or is Jirachi the only answer here? I feel like Jirachi... I feel like Deoxys is also mythical, so I feel like you can go either way here. 49.9% must be Deoxys is the more popular one. We take those. <laughs> Mewtwo? Mewtwo is not a mythical Pokemon, nor is it from Hoenn, but, you know, I respect the... I respect the knowledge. Bulbasaur? Deo Deoxys Defense Form! Oh, you know, that probably would... I probably It probably would have been smart to go with a Deoxys Form. Now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, most common was Jirachi. Least common was Deoxys Attack Form. Zama Zenta Crowned? Tinka Tink? Meloet, Meloetta, pure, I forgot all about Meloetta when it comes to the mythical, oh my gosh, okay. Well, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine, you got, most unique possible was 96, I got 208, not one of my better performances here, but it's all good. It's all good. At least we, uh, at least I filled out the grid, that's probably more than... More than most people can say a lot of the time. I mean, these these Pokédoku puzzles, they get pretty hard. All right. But you know what else is hard is finding a flish, finding a flish, finding a fish that is not a flounder in Puffertle. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Is this a flounder? I don't know what this is. Does it strike me that it could be a flounder? <laughs> Honestly, I d if I don't know, if I don't have a clear indication of where to go, I think we just default to flounder now because, like, why would you not? It's proven so effective in the past. All right, it's not an oceanic fish. It's not all season. Or it's not... Well, flounder is a specific season, so... It, but this also means it's not all season. It is a specific season, and it's not one that the flounder is native to. The flounder is native in spring, and is it spring and winter? I want to say spring and winter. I don't know. I feel I know I'm, I know you can catch it in spring for a fact. It's like spring, ocean, eleven to eight p.m. something like that. So we're looking for none of those. Well, okay, eleven to eight. There's some overlap there. This could be an all-day fish. That seems most plausible to me. I guess it could also be like a. No, it's not. Wait, it's not eleven. It's like six a.m. to to eight p.m. I don't know why I was getting eleven. Okay. Um. How about? This might be an all-day fish. I don't think this is a carp. It, it it wasn't moving that much, but carps move like even less than than that did. I'm gonna. No, it can't be a carp because carp is all season, right? Okay, so it can't be carp. Let's say freshwater fish that's not available in spring. A non-spring freshwater fish of some repute. Is this a perch? Are you a perch? I'm going to try perch. Okay, not a perch. The location does have some overlap, though. Okay. That's good information. The perch does not have any seasonal overlap. Is this a summer fish? This could be like a summer or fall fish, I think. Location has some overlap, but there's extra overlap somewhere else. So the, the perch is available in the mountain lake and in the river. So it's got to be like one of those two, but just not both, I think. Could you be... I want to say smallmouth bass, but I feel like that's not like the seasons aren't right for that. What are... What is this fish? It's It could be... Maybe it's a salmon? Could you be a salmon? It is a salmon, okay. <laughs> I thought about it, I was like, salmon, fall fish, fresh water, river, it's, it's all lining up. It's all starting to line up, baby. One of those fish you just rarely even think about. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take a salmon on that one. One of my favorite fish, in terms of like fish that you eat. <laughs> We got there eventually. Salmon, like I said, it's one of those fish you don't really think about all that often. At least I don't. Um, so it, it's, it took a while for my brain to eventually make that connection. But there's only so many fish that it could be, right? What's my favorite Stardew Valley fish? 
I mean, given the history I have with it at this point, I feel like I gotta say Lava Eel. <laughs> I really, I do like the Lava Eel. It might be kind of like a normie choice. I feel like the Lava Eel is kind of like an edgy default pick, but it's, you know, we got, we got a story to history, me and that Lava Eel. Eventually, you got it in three. Yeah, I got it in three guesses, but I was, like, taking a while on each of those guesses. I think that's why I was, like, eventually... Clownfish? That'd be cool if there was a clownfish in Stardew. I think that'd be fun. Closest we have is, like, a lionfish. Which is, like, same kind of colors as a clownfish. But very, very different, ichthyologically speaking. All right. Y'all ready to befriend Linus here? Linus is kind of our Achilles heel when it comes to befriending in this challenge because at least recently we've been depending a lot on the movie theater in order to befriend people and Linus doesn't like any movies, like literally zero. So the movie theater is not gonna help us here. I think we're basically just gonna have to rely on good old fashioned Iridium Rabbit's feet on this, guy, on this one here. We got Iridium Rabbit's Feet. I can give him, like, maybe a Cactus Fruit or two. We got Cactus Fruit here. I don't know what else we have that Linus would love. I think we start things off right, though. I mean, it's iconic. The Cactus Fruit is... <laughs> is symbolic. It's a great olive branch to extend. A Cactus Branch to extend, even. Coconuts and Glazed Yams. We can cook Glazed Yams, wait, can't we? Wait, does he love Glazed Yams? I thought that was, like, Mayor Lewis. Speaking of, Lewis, your your days are numbered at the top of the list is all I'm saying. What do I have for Linus? Do I know? I haven't given any gifts of any kind to Linus, so I, I, I thought maybe I would have learned something somewhere else. Just yams, not glazed. Yams hold the glaze. I got you. Okay. Oh, this could be good. This could be very good. Last year, we got really lucky on this one. We actually got a... We got a... I think it was we were befriending Kent, right? There's a chance here. There's always a chance. I skipped past it. I'm so bad for that. I'm so sorry. I, I ruin the climactic moment every single time. Where is it? Secret gift giver. Okay, your secret friend this year is Sam. Wah, wah, wah. At least it's someone we can give a gift to, though. We can at least go to the festival and give Sam a gift. So there, there's that, at least. But, hey, we can give him a cactus fruit. <laughs> Yeah, so we can at least visit the festival, which is more than we can say a lot of the previous years. Either way. Yo, I just realized we got the Earth Obelisk last time. That's like a super quick way to get to Linus. <laughs> you just warp over here and we're literally like right next to him. That's so good. Perfect. Here you go, buddy. Enjoy. <laughs> Earth Obelisk coming in clutch. Do you want something from me? Nah, I just wanted to visit. Nice little place you got here. Mind if I hang out for a spell? So, like, what do you do all day? Um. Well, this was fun. I, I'll see you next time, buddy. I'll see you next time. That that was a good, good way, good way to start off our befriending journey. Randomizer is thinking a step ahead. I can donate this. Wait, amphibian fossil. That's got to be, like, so rare up here. I feel like I've never gotten an amphibian fossil from an artifact spot. I feel like you always get that one from fishing. Well, I'll go donate it, I guess. <laughs> like, why not, right? Snow yam to boot. And we have a Linus quest. We do! We have the blackberry basket! We can finally, we can finally give Bl Linus his blackberry basket, only, like, 25 years late. <laughs> All right, I'll go. I'll go make a detour for that in a second. Hey there, Day Mayor. Welcome on in. We already pelted him for the other quest, the one for fiber seeds, right? We already got our our fiber seeds. Yeah, so we can't we can't do that quest to get extra friendship that way. But that's okay. We can at least get one free friendship heart through the blackberry basket. So that's pretty nice. All right, amphibian fossil. Stick that right up there. Love to see it. Every artifact we can get prior to getting the uh, the goal to roll the the star drop from the museum is uh, is a win in my book. 
cave patrol, aquatic. Yeah, okay, we're fine. Linus the poorest next to Beatrix in her tiara and royal cape. Oh, the irony. I think Linus is putting on airs. I think he's, he secretly has like a boatload of money and he just chooses to live in the in, in nature. And we love that for him. We love that for Linus. I respect it and I appreciate it. You're sick, so you must be, mostly be lurking today. No worries, Bex. I know the feeling. Get better soon. Yo, I found the berry basket. I've been looking all over for this thing. No one tell Linus that I knew where it was for the past 25 years and just chose not to give it to him. <laughs> Let's all pretend that I just I just found it. I'm amazed that it hasn't worn down given like the conditions that it's been through. Rain and snow and, and sun and wind. It, it's been all over the place. Linus, are you still looking for this? <laughs> My basket, thank you. This means a lot to me. I think, I think he's just trying to be nice. He's probably already went and got a new basket by this point, right? He has to have. You'd think Linus would have found that in the last 25 years by himself? True point, honestly. That's, that's a very valid point. 25 years, exclamation point year. We're closing in on year 26, I'm pretty sure, right? Unless I'm losing track. I could very well be losing track of time. How the years fly by. Feels like just yesterday that I that I started watching MatPat for the first time, and now he's freaking retiring. What's that about, dude? All right. OMG, no. I know. I've been feeling like particularly melancholy for the past couple days. I know. I don't want to, you know, open open wounds for anybody here, but. But seeing Matt Pat retire after so after so long, like obviously he deserves it, and I wish him all the best in his in his retirement to him and his family. He's put so much of his of his life into his work, and it's it's amazing. He's a very passionate, inspiring creator. He's not retiring; he's stepping down as host. He's retiring from the role of host, I guess. But yeah, he is still going to be like working on other stuff and like behind the scenes. He's not going to be as prevalent, but he'll still be around, which is you know. It's still nice. It'll still be nice. At least he's not completely, like, disappearing from the internet. Because Doom's out here just trying to cheer us all up now. <laughs> as soon as we start thinking about Matt Pat, and all of a, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, here, Kazoom, Kazoom comes in to save the day. Never heard of Matt Pat? Really, Lisa? Well, I guess if you don't frequent certain circles of the internet, then uh, he's not as prevalent of a name, but he's the, he's the man behind... The game theory channel, uh, film theory, food theory, style theory, like this whole suite of different channels and projects and things. He's a, uh, he's pretty, he, he's a busy guy. He's a busy guy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> channels you don't watch, fair enough. They're not for everybody, but they are, uh, I don't talk about it that often, but I have, I've watched, please don't destroy my tennis, happened before. Never gonna happen again, Linus, mark my words. Tell me who it was, I'll find them. Yeah, I don't talk about it all that much, but I am, I'm a pretty avid game theory enjoyer. I think the first time, the first time I really got into watching game theory was right around the, when they were popping off with uh, the, the first Five Nights at Freddy's theory. I think that's when I first discovered them, and uh, and I never looked back. There, he's and he's been something of an inspiration to me. In sort of obviously, I don't make the same kind of the same kind of content as uh, as Matt Pat and his team, like theory videos and all that stuff. But the principles upon which they make that content are very near and dear to me. Of like using games and different sorts of media as a vehicle for learning and discovery like that's what i do with a lot of that's what i love to do about or that's what i love all these like challenge runs for to a certain extent right is that um by doing these different challenges and approaching these games in ways that w were never intended or are so like oblique that you know you have to get creative and learn new ways and learn new things in order to complete the challenges it's uh it, it is a learning process it's an, it's learning experimentation it's about the journey 
and uh, and to a certain extent, that was inspired by by one Matthew Patrick for sure. So it's definitely bittersweet to see him go, but I'm I'm happy for him. Technically challenge videos are a type of theory. It's true. It's like the theory is like, can you complete, you know, can can you catch every fish in a single day, Stardew Valley? That's that was the theory, and instead of, you know, leaving it as a theory and theorizing about the ways it could be done, you just go and go and put it to the test. Game hypothesis, exactly. A testable empirical hypothesis. <laughs> Yeah, Nightbot gets, is a little bit late sometimes. Lightbot, Nightbot just gets a little overwhelmed and confused. Uh, it's Sunday, so I can go out and give Linus another gift today. We just rolled over. There's no reason to wait any later in the week than, like, Sunday, Monday. That's going to be the nice thing about befriending Linus here, is that he's available from, from the moment you wake up. I don't have to do anything complicated for him to, like, like take him to the movies or anything like that. We can just uh, we can just keep on indulging him with rabbit's feet until the day is uh, until uh, give him rabbit's feet as the day is long. Sleeping on the ground is good for my back. It's best to look at the positive side of things. Absolutely true! Exclamation point optimism. Two hearts easy. That's two hearts already. I mean, it makes it makes sense. That's all. That's two and a half hearts. Oh my gosh, we are rolling. We are schmoving through the friendship here. Any Linus aficionados know if there are um, uh, heart events with him that will give me extra friendship points? I wouldn't mind seeing the heart events either way, obviously. But if I can get extra friendship points out of them too, then it's it's even more of an incentive. Get a zero heart event. The zero heart event involves waiting until later in the day. Could we get that if we go into town after the Feast of the Winter Star? We might be able to to do to do that. Night market trash event. If you check the trash when he's get when he's passing on his way down to the night market, that's true. Unfortunately, the night market is behind us now, so uh, no opportunity to do, to do that. Yeah, we haven't gotten that one in uh, in fractured farm yet in Beatrix's journey. 1,000 pets for Tim Beeb soon. Yo, Pi is at 1111 pets? <laughs> That's crazy. What a, what a nice, round, perfect number. You love to see it. Heart check? We did just we just checked it uh, before going to sleep yesterday. We're at two and a half hearts with Linus. We're literally a quarter of the way there already. Of course, one heart of that was from just the, the Blackberry Basket, returning that to him, so... It's gonna be a bit slower than all that. There's no six heart event. What heart events do I remember for Linus? There's the, there's the 50 friendship point event. It can get really cold if you live in a tent. Trust me, brother, it could get really cold even if you're not living in a tent. Case in point, my fingers are... Are, are slightly numb right now. Well, not numb, but they're they're cold. <laughs> they are cold, even though I've got my heat up. Zero, four, and eight. There's the one friendship event, or the one heart event with Linus. Okay, yeah, there's the one where you... Like, the zero heart event. There's the four heart event where you learn how to craft wild bait. And there's the eight heart event. That's the one with, like, Robin, right? Where you, like, step outside and Robin's, like... What's this wild man doing out here? Or something like that. And then he also sends you recipes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm up to date on my Linus lore. My Linus lore tips. Being cold is so uncomfortable. Bad feeling for sure. I don't mind a certain degree of being cold. Like, I obviously don't want to be too hot, but I don't want to be too cold either. But I feel like... Ooh, sashimi recipe. That's a good one to have. Thank you, Linus. I feel like I tend more towards enjoying 
the cold side of warm, if that makes sense. I feel like I'd rather be slightly cold than, like, perfectly warm. You don't mind being too cold, but you'd rather not be really freezing? Yeah, that's... I mean, I am wearing a, a long sleeve shirt today, which I, which I don't often do at home because it doesn't normally get that cold, but it, today it definitely warms it. It's cozy. I think long... I think I underrate long sleeve shirts, honestly. I, I pretty consistently just wear, like, t-shirts, especially at home. But anytime I do wear a long sleeve shirt or a sweater or something like that... I, I just it, it feels like I'm getting a hug from my clothes and it's just the uh, it's just a nice feeling all around what's the coldest weather I've ever been in I think the coldest weather I've ever like experienced like when you say been in do you mean like outside inside or does does that not like I guess it would ha you'd have to be like go outside to actually be in the temperature to experience it in that regard, I would say the coldest temperature I can recall being in is probably about minus 40 before wind chill. Because it, it can it can like consistently, at least at some point during during the winters around here, it gets down to minus 40 with wind chill. So it'll be like minus 30, but then the wind the wind factor brings it down to minus 40. Very rarely does it get down to minus 40 like naturally, but I have experienced that at least like once in my life before. And, uh, yeah, it was a, you know, very brief exposure. You really don't want to be out there for long in that. It gets extremely dangerous, but... Especially if you don't have, like, the proper layers for it. Minus 57 Celsius. That is ungodly. That is, I, I would not wish that on my worst enemy. Where were you, Kitty Krug? Were you in freaking Antarctica? <laughs> That's crazy. You've run shirtless in minus 12 degrees Celsius. There was that, like, documentary about the one dude who, like, uh, ran, like, a marathon barefoot in, like, minus 20 degrees or something like that. I don't even know. There's, like, people can be very different, differently acclimated to different temperatures. It's amazing what some people can endure. All right, today is Feast of the Winter Star. We're definitely going to go out to it, and then I'm going to test to see if I can get the friendship event with Linus uh, after after the festival. What's a good gift for Sam? Do we think we, I could just go cactus fruit? I mean, cactus fruit is a is a, is a great gift for him as well. Cactus fruit. We could go pizza. Little slice of pizza. I feel like giving someone a pizza at, at, for Christmas is a little. <laughs> I mean, sure he'd like it. He'd dare I say he'd even love it. But I mean, if I if I were to have to choose between getting a pizza or a cactus fruit for Christmas, I would probably rather get the cactus fruit just because it's like a unique thing, right? Don't yuck his yum. I'm not yucking his yum. I'm just saying that he can probably get pizza a lot more readily than he can get cactus fruit. If if he loves pizza and cactus fruit equal amounts, which according to his, his likes and loves, he does, I think he would rather get a cactus fruit than a pizza because you can just go to the saloon and buy a pizza. Let's make this a special occasion for him, right? What if, what if we cut up the cactus fruit and put it on the pizza? Has anyone done that before? A little cactus fruit pizza? I feel like that could go kind of hard, honestly. Your family leaves pizza out for Rudolph? That's awesome. They probably get sick of eating all like the carrots and celery that everybody else leaves out for them, so so getting a nice old slice of za instead is probably probably a breath of fresh air for those reindeer. Or a breath of cheesy air. Who here likes pineapple pizza? Sheepishly raises hand. Ooh. -woo. Now pineapple pi pineapple on pizza is fine. It's not gonna be. It's not my favorite type of pizza. 
but it is definitely like it's up there in the in the rankings for sure. Your sister's family always has pizza on Christmas Day. I mean, I got nothing against that. Having pizza on Christmas Day, that's pretty based, honestly. Instead of, like, I would probably, I, I like a good, like, traditional turkey or ham dinner or whatever, what, what have you. I'm, I'm always down for that, and it's always nice to have that around the holidays. But if one year, my mom was just like, hey, I'm not in the mood to, you know, make, the di make this dinner or, like, work on this dinner. Why don't we just order a pizza instead? I'd be kind of like... I'd be kind of hyped for that. I'd be like, yo, pizza. I don't order pizza for myself all that often, so it's still enough of a treat that I am, uh, I'm always very excited about it. And even if I didn't, even if I did order pizza on, more, like, a more regular basis, I'd probably still be excited because pizza is just good. All right. Off to the festival. Pam, where are you going? The festival's back this way. There's gotta be lots of, like, good food and drink out here. You're missing out is all I'm gonna say. Talk to so many people here now. Marnie and Jaffs, today is the time to, time to be thankful for this year's good fortune. Someone didn't hear about about the MatPat news. <laughs> good fortune? Nah, it's alright. <laughs> it's been the only thing on my brain for the past, like, two days. I don't know. I, it's like, when I saw that announcement, I was, like, so just, like... At first, I, it, it didn't, like, phase me that much, and then the more I thought about it, the, the sadder I got. Do you want to hear the legend of the Winter Star? Not this time, Willie. Thank you, though. How you doing over here, Linus? I join in, but I don't think I'm welcome. Aww. You're, you're welcome at my table, Linus. Sorry, ne next year he's going to feel more than welcome. He's going to be in here amongst uh, all of our friends and in the inner circle for sure. Spending time with family is tiring sometimes. True. True words were never spoken. Foxy is starting his 24-hour stream tomorrow, one after I start one hour after I start mine. Does he stream on YouTube or is he gonna be streaming elsewhere? Can we open presents now? Hold your horses, little little man. <laughs> if he's streaming on YouTube, I could I could send we could send a little raid to, to Poxiel if he's doing a 24-hour stream. That could be a fun time. I have not befriended Jody yet. I have befriended Alex. I'm going down the checklist of people in my brain. Thinking of who I befriended. Aren't you cold, dear? It's freezing. Nah, it's all good. This these they make these royal, royal clothes nice and puffy and warm. Hope there's a new camera for me under the spirit tree. I never really registered that they call it a spirit tree. It, it sounds like something more like you'd experience on like Halloween or something like that, the spirit tree, but it's it as long as it's like a good spirit, I guess. Have I befriended Caroline? I don't think I don't think I have, right? I always think I have just because of the ginger quest, and then I but then I, I actually haven't. Nothing like a pipe and hot feast on a cold winter's day, huh? You mean that tree is a g -g 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 ghost? It's like a scoop. What do we got here? Anything of interest? Log panel. Log panel, wood panel, decorative axe. Nothing jumping out to me today. Maybe next maybe next year I'll be in a different kind of mood for that, Pierre. At any rate, let's go give our boy his cactus fruit. I could give him some hay instead, if I really want him to hate me, but to hay to me. A cactus fruit, thanks. Look, he's so hot. He's so happy about it. Pierre! Oh no. He's gonna give me like a coupon. <laughs> Dude, no. I'm scared. What's is maybe maybe he's got, got me a really thoughtful gift. I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm underestimating Pierre. Let's find out here. I'm your secret gift giver this year. Please, Pierre. Think of all the grass starters I bought from you. A beer. <laughs> Man went over and, and bought a beer 
literally the day before, maybe even the day of the festival. He's like, oh, shoot, I haven't gotten her a gift yet. Uh, uh, she, everyone likes beer, right? <laughs> sure. I mean, I guess I am pretty good friends with Pam. And she gives me beer all the time, so maybe he saw that and then put two and two together. But an open mug of beer. <laughs> and a beer. Great song. Great song. Should have given me a backpack. That would have been the the best winter star of all. Absolutely true. Let me go see if I can... I, I don't know that I'll be able to get this hard event today. I don't remember the exact time frame. I mean, 10, 8, 10 p.m. should be the time frame. As long as you can get it on a festival day, this should be... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. <laughs> the dichotomy of this hard event with Pickle Jar Rag is a little bit funny to me. <laughs> I kind of love this. It makes it feel a bit more slapstick than, than what it actually is here. Sounds like those raccoons are at it again, filthy varmints. Hello. Have I met you before? <laughs> oh, you're Evelyn's husband. You're Evelyn's husband. That's right. Yeah, I'll go scare those raccoons. No problem. Tell them who's boss. My loyal raccoon subjects bow before me. Oh, it's you, Linus. PJR is never inappropriate. It's never inappropriate, but it does change the mood for sure. I feel like this is kind of a, a rare version of this scene, by the way. Obviously, the contents of the heart event are the same, but you got Dusty here and you got Pam's house over here. It's got to be, we got to be one of the very few people to have those things done before ever seeing this event. Most people have this in like their first, like, their first season of the game. <laughs> um, it's a shame for food to go to waste. Hey, man, I do it too. There's, there's no shame in it whatsoever. You're, you're all good. And it's winter. True. Also, the fact that Beatrix is in a royal outfit for this goal. Def definitely makes it feel a bit different, doesn't it? I also love that Beatrix never comes out from behind the saloon. She's just, like, chilling back there. <laughs> Who knows what she's doing, but, uh... She's privy to all this. I know what you were doing, Linus. He's about to become a creepypasta, dude. That's, scary. That's a scary line. I've got a basket of zucchini fritters just for you. Just make sure you dip them in my spicy marinara. 1.6 wish list item added. Give me zucchini fritters. Let me grow zucchini and bake them into fritters so that I can I can try those out for myself. I'd be down. I feel like, I feel like zucchini would be right at home as far as uh Stardew crops go. Do you think any new crops will be added in 1.6 or, or are we past the point where or crops can be added anymore. And a spicy marinara. Ooh. Got my mouth watering thinking about that one. He's literally literally adding a giant chi crop. I mean, that's technically just an alternative version of an existing crop, though. It's like it's it's the giant version of the chi fruit. I don't know if I count that as a, as an entirely unique crop. I wouldn't put it past Concerned Ape to add actual new crops, though. <laughs> you know what would be great, though, is if, like, you know, if he's add if he's adding new crops and, like, people are speculating, like, oh, it's probably going to be something really cool. Maybe we'll be able to grow, like, maybe we'll have, like, dragon fruit trees or maybe we'll be grow something, like, really exotic and weird. And then 1.6 drops and it's like, you can now grow carrots. <laughs> I would still be very excited. Carrots seem like a bit of a a bit of a, a gap in the in the Stardew agricultural vocabulary if you if you if you're asking me. There are cave carrots, yes, but I can't grow cave carrots. I have to I have to go like har I have to go dig in on my hands and knees through the dirt in the mines to get carrots in this game. Let me let me grow them in my fields, please. Yeah, let me give me give me a chance to get some nice clean carrots. Oh, 
also onions. <laughs> onions kind of fall in the same in the same vein. You got spring onions, but you can't actually grow onions yourself, so there's there's definitely a few a few places where you could add a few extra crops to to fully round out the, the possibilities of vegetables and, and fruits and stuff. Carrots, onion, cabbage. We have red cabbage that you can grow. I don't know if having cabbage, like, like cabbage and red cabbage would be redundant. Obviously, you can use them for different culinary purposes in real life, but as far as, like, Stardew goes, I feel like it might be a bit overkill to have two varietals of cabbage. Carrot cake? Ooh, different types of cakes? I feel like we might be waiting until Haunted Chocolatier for that one, though. Like, if you're running, like, a chocolatier business, surely there is there are going to be more options for, like, baked goods and cakes and pastries and all these things. That seems like a, like a no-brainer to me, to be able to, like, make a bunch of different types of cakes in that game. Also, I just realized, apropos of nothing at all, um, our birthday luck with these befriending goals continues to be absolutely atrocious. Linus's birthday is winter third, if my memory serves correctly. So, so we're not really gonna have a have much of a chance to get that. Rip. Onions, so we can make French onion soup. Ooh, that does sound. I do love a good French onion soup. Kind of want soup today. Soup is, is definitely one of those quintessential cold day types of food. I mean, is they really special? Sleeping on the ground is good for my back. Depends on what kind of ground you're sleeping on, honestly. Blooming onion recipe? Blooming onions! Sunday, also New Year. It's true, it has not escaped my notice. The New Year is about to dawn upon us. We typically ship jelly for the new year, but I actually don't think we have any jelly to ship this year, do we? I haven't been making jelly for a while. Like, I haven't made any ancient fruit jelly in, in quite some time, so I actually don't think we have jelly ready to ship. I see no jelly to ship. Okay, we have to, we have to make a new tradition then. What are we, what are we gonna ship? Let's look at our shipping goals. What the possibilities that we have this ship, and we'll pick something something fun out of this. Milk, large eggs. Milk and large eggs would be good, because we do have the, uh, the farming buff now that makes animal produce worth 20% more. Should I ship all the large milk? Eggplants, the first ever shipping goal. Beer. I don't think, do we have beer as a shipping goal? Or do we have, do we only have, we have pale ale and we have mead. We haven't had beer yet, I don't think. Oh no, do we, we do, it's down there. It's down there, my bad. Ship the beer I got from Pierre. It's been a while, you know what? Even if this doesn't necessarily turn out to be our tradition, I think, I think we're overdue for a large milk shipment. I feel like we haven't shipped it and got a big money injection in quite some time. So so why not go clear out the auto grabbers and and see what kinda what kind of money we're working with in the new year here. By the way, happy new year to you, Pi. Happy New Year. Ship milk and also some eggs. Let's not go overboard now. I mean, I'm just gonna We'll we'll start with the milk and we'll see how we feel after that. Alright. What kind of milk reserves do we got in here? We're only looking for large milk, just large cow's milk. That's is that right? We don't have any other types. We can we can ship goat milk technically, just like regular goat milk, but we only have large goat milk here anyway. So grab all this. Beautiful. Make it nice and frosty in the winter air out here. Yo, what the heck? I forgot. I got jump scared by Twitter. All right. Look at all these ostrich eggs as well. Ready, ripe and ready to be incubated in the near future. I get, we, we can ship ostrich eggs, can't we? 
Didn't we get that shipping goal? Yeah, ostrich eggs. We could ship ostrich eggs. Could be our, our first real ostrich egg shipment. We got scammed out of a number. <laughs> we got we skipped the num in the number of pets there from one 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 to one 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 three. Nightbot gets a little goofy that way sometimes. Yeah, I'll throw I'll throw in some ostrich eggs. You know what I'm feeling? I'm feeling a little a little feisty that way. All right, the last of our milk should be in here. I do, I literally don't have enough inventory space for all the milk. <laughs> There's too much milk here. I need this backpack upgrade, like, pronto. Okay. We'll drop some off here. Then we'll go grab a little bit more. Got milk. <laughs> Do we ever have milk? Alright. I mean, I'm down here anyway. What other types of eggs can we ship? I can ship large and small brown eggs. I can't ship any white eggs. I can also ship void eggs. I can ship rabbit's feet, technically, but I feel like... Well, I guess I could ship, like, the non-iridium quality rabbit's feet. We, we could definitely go with that. Alright, brown eggs is what we're looking for here. Brown eggs for my brown chickens. We got quite a few varieties here. 783 iridium quality brown eggs. Holy moly. Okay. Um... I guess we can do these smaller eggs as well. Why not? All right, we gotta go. We gotta go do a, a shipping bin run here. At least we don't have to run all the way to Pierre's. That's that's the nice thing about that we've unlocked these items as shippables. We don't have to worry about when Pierre's gonna close. We don't have. We can just take our time. That said, I probably will down a crab cake so I can do this a little bit faster. All right, pop these away. Hey there, Susan. Susan Edgecombe, welcome on in. Need more shipping bins. All right, where are my crab cakes? We can do a little triple shot. We can do a little crab cake. And just go to town. What type of eggs do the blue chickens make? Do they, do they only make white eggs? Or do they make a, a variety of eggs? I know they don't make blue eggs. I, I wish they did, but only white eggs. Unfortunate. Unf oh my god. <laughs> what is this auto grabber though? One, two, three, four, five, six stacks, six full stacks of iridium quality large white eggs. What on earth? I have left this coop for a long time. Oh my goodness. Build another shipping bin near the barns. That's actually probably a good idea. When we, when we find... I think we leave this until we can actually get the goal to ship large white eggs. And we just see how much we rake in at that point. I think that, I think that's a fun way to do it. Instead of like taking, taking off to Pierre's and selling all that. Just keep letting it build. Okay, what else we got here? Uh, dinosaur eggs I can ship because they count as artifacts. Gunther can tell you... I haven't donated a dinosaur egg yet. Eh, one day. One day we'll do it. Alright, I can ship void eggs. I can ship rabbit's feet. We'll save the iridium quality ones. I can't ship anything else in here, can I? I can't ship wool or anything like that. Is Dino Mayo restricted? I believe Dino Mayo is part of the shipping collection, so I can't ship that yet. Plus, I don't have a mayonnaise machine to even make it yet. Okay. Go see what else we got on deck here. On deck slash in coop. Uh, we're looking for brown eggs. Egg, 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 egg. Oh, don't have enough room. Okay, fair enough. Okay, we'll come back for the remaining brown eggs here. Ship stone. <laughs> I think once 1.6 releases, you might try a randomized perfection run. We'll have to... I don't know how much... Uh, how many perfection requirements are going to be added 
in 1.6, but uh, we will have to update the, the randomizer once that drops. What do you think is going to happen first? All right, well, you know what? Should I take should I take one dinosaur egg and just and sell it and give it to Gunther? Eh. We can wait. <laughs> I'll take the money instead. All right, fine. Fine. We'll take we'll take one. We'll take one. Sell the rest. It's an iridium quality dinosaur egg as well, so you better appreciate this one. How many barns slash coops do I have? I think we have three barns and three coops, right? Not all of them are necessarily created equal. We've got uh, a variety of animals across all the different buildings, but I believe that is the, the sum total. Going the long way. I just wanted to zoom on Iota. <laughs> I just wanted to feel alive. All right, donate to museum. Little dinosaur egg. Certified dinosaur egg moment right there. Josie, exclamation point year, will tell you how many years we've been playing this farm so far. Um, It's about to change, though, because today is literally New Year's Eve. So we're about to crest into year 26, I believe. <laughs> 26 years on Fractured Farm and, and counting. Oh, the regular Bolton board? What do we got? It could be Linus, I guess. That's true. That's a that's a valid point. I should check this. Buying one crystal fruit at three times the market value? 450 gold for a crystal fruit. Kind of wild. Kind of makes me want to do it, but, but Jody's not on our radar right now. Can't believe I'm getting excited over 450 gold. How many freaking pieces of milk did I just ship? <laughs> My perspective's all kind of skewed. All right, let's go see. I think there's still just a few more eggs to pick up out of this barn, right? I think this is the last of it. Just these brown eggs here. Might as well ship them all. All right, we leave everything else, and I think that's pretty much it for animal products, right? Hold on. Boom, perfect. Don't have to come back for that one. All right. Get shipped. Get shipped. Get them all shipped out of here. Perfect. Okay. We have shipped everything that is within our ability to ship right now. As far as, like, animal products and stuff go. I am I am very excited and simultaneously a little scared to see how much our money goes up. <laughs> we are currently just over 6 million gold. 6,013,000. Place your bets in chat now. I'm not going to do a poll for this because I have no idea what I would even make the choices. But drop your bets in chat now. What will this number be after we wake up tomorrow? After the shipment has gone through, everything's done and dusted, the, the dust is finally settled. We're going from 6 million to what? After shipping, Yobo only knows how much, how much large milk. <laughs> Are we going to gift... Did we not give a gift to Linus yet today? Uh, we did. We did. We gave him a gift today. All right, we're good. We got that covered. Nine million, ten million, nine million, eight point two five, twenty four million, ten million plus, eleven point nine. I'm gonna stake my claim. Six million. I think with off the back of that, factoring in, you can't forget about this factor here that. Animal products, which basically everything we just sold as an animal, animal product, are worth 20% more. I think this is going to be a 10 million, not a 10 million like total shipment, but I think we're going to hit 10 million, maybe get up to 11, but I'm going to, I'm going to be a little bit reserved and I'm, I'm going to say 10 million here. <laughs> I think we're, I think we're going to hit 10 million, but not 11 million, somewhere in between. 
That's going to be my guess. Either way, that's only that's only half of the celebration here is the payday. The other half, get your party popper emojis, your firework emojis, any other celebratory emojis, emojis you have ready because we are about to crest into a new year and in style. Are you all ready for this one? Get get them locked and loaded, but don't don't type enter yet. I'm going to count you down. You ready? You ready? Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, hold, okay, 3, <laughs> 2, 1, wait for it, I got kind of flummoxed there. Happy New Year, everybody, happy New Year, year 26 hath arrived. Almost 12 million, almost 12 million dollars total holy moly i feel like some people said 11.9 at, le at least one person said 11.9 <laughs> maggie was that you radioactive blaze 11.9 million dollars that is ridiculous you guys want to go build a second golden clock just because we can 35 million in total earnings a third of which we have, like, in our pocket right now. <laughs> Alright, before I get too far ahead of myself here, let me pop on over to Nightbot. And tell you the good news. Good news, Nightbot. It is now year 26. Believe it or not. Yeah, we are we already have one golden clock. <laughs> I never thought. Well, I guess I should have thought after getting the gold clock so early, we had the money infrastructure there to gain just as much money as we could ever realistically need. So it shouldn't be that much of a surprise that we have enough for a second one if we wanted to, but Oh my gosh. All right. I don't, we could we could theoretically build a second golden clock and then still have money left over for whatever we need, but I think we I think we just let this build up as much as we can. Why not? Maybe there'll come a time where the second golden clock flex will be will be the right play, but doesn't feel doesn't feel right to me just yet. You know what we can do instead? We have to decide what crops we want to plant for the year because we usually have like a, a seat like a theme for the year. Is there is there a way to, we could do like golden crops to celebrate getting to 10 million gold yet again? Have a good one there, Vince. Thanks for hanging out. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your night. Are 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 there like golden crops or like yellowish crops that we could do every season? We could do in spring. In spring there is parsnips they're kind of they're kind of gold or coffee beans coffee beans are, are another good shout oh, it's so green i feel like this spring looks more green than all the other springs have so far am i crazy probably but chris bear of the wilderness is all i care to know I live out here by choice i'm telling you he's got he's got secret amounts of money for sure Sunflowers in summer. Ooh, pineapples. I, I Well, we don't have that... We don't really have ready access to pineapple seeds, unfortunately. So I don't think that's uh, that's too likely for us. It would be fun, though. Starfruit in summer. Starfruit was probably a good shout-out. Starfruit or sunflowers or something like that. Why not? Yeah, let's do parsnips. Let's start with parsnips in spring here. I don't know if we've done a full field of parsnips yet. You got you got to pay homage to to the OG crops. The first crop that pretty much everybody planted when they first started playing Stardew Valley. You got to you got to give it its due day. Imagine if we discovered the so far undiscovered secret that spring year 26 is secretly greener than all the other years. That would be kind of an underwhelming secret, but I would be happy to discover it here first. All right. 
we take those. 138 parsnips and a dream. I gotta make sure to turn off harvesting for the Junimos, because I think harvesting is still on since we had... We did trellis crops last year, which means that we had a... Uh, uh, that we were fine to just let them harvest because it wouldn't, like, they'd, they'd all regrow, right? Back to our root vegetables. Plus two. Good joke. <laughs> Every year, spring gets 1% greener. I feel like that's something that Blade would know, considering he's gone to, like, year 36,000 or something like that. At that point, it would just be so blindingly green, you wouldn't be able to, like, look at the at the screen. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if the year, like, the value for the year in the game's code is stored as, like, a... I wonder if it's stored as a signed integer or not. Like, if you got to, like, year 2 billion, 147 million and whatever, like, the, the integer limit... Would you would you roll over into a negative year, or would you have to go like further beyond like four billion and something in order to roll back to year zero? Because eventually the year would roll would overflow, right? Not at a point that anyone would ever reasonably get to without you know hacking the game. It tells you to stop playing at that point. You you reach the screen. It says you've you congratulations on completing a great game. Please start a new file. <laughs> congratulations, you've beaten Stardew Valley. There's nothing more for you to see. <laughs> Please go 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 play something else. All right. Turn off our harvesting here. Also, Junimo Hut's looking a tad full here. We might need to do some some condensing. Some condensing of the chests here. There's some room in that chest. We can move some of the, Let's move it, all the hops over to that chest. There's room there. These chests really have no rhyme or reason right now, but... <laughs> Alright, do we have room for grapes in the purple chests? We don't, really, unfortunately. <laughs> we need more chests. I never thought I'd say it, but here we are. We're in a world where we, we need more chests. I guess I could leave the grapes in here. There's technically enough room for, for all our needs, but... Move these over for right now. Move the hops into the second chest. Is there another chest with hops over here? Somewhere? We can't... Oh, we can we can condense there. There are some grapes here. There's definitely like wait, there's definitely things that we can consolidate. Not only between like all these chests, but between uh, between these chests and the ones at home. We can condense that. What else can we condense here? The beets? Can we condense the beets? We can. Okay. Yams, rhubarb, parsnips. Can we condense parsnips? No. Parsnips over here? No. Okay. Kale. You're right. You're right. Kale can be condensed, like so. Okay. That, that frees up a decent amount of room here, right? Condensed beets, my favorite snack. <laughs> Eat some condensed beets with your condensed milk. Chat, what are the special properties of condensed milk? Why, why does condensed milk exist? And what makes it different from just like regular milk? Little chest defrag. We could do we could do a lot more <laughs> a lot more defragging of these chests, that's for sure, but save that for another time here. It's thick. 
I would imagine it's thick because it's been made more dense, aka it has been condensed. More milk per square inch. Is is so condensed milk is just for people who love milk so much that they don't get enough milk out of like the regular milk that they they drink, like two percent or one percent or whatever. So they need to condense more milk into the average gulp in order to to consume it. Less water in the milk. Do people drink condensed milk, or is it is it basically only for baking? Like, if you drank condensed milk, would you be sad, or would you be just be like, that's just like really like weird milk, or just like more more milk taste? Mostly for baking, you do when no one's looking. Your secret's safe with me. People put condensed milk in their coffee or tea. Okay, so something you could, like, mix in. It tastes good. I wouldn't mind trying some condensed milk. Just, just to see. Is it, like, sweeter than regular milk? So for some reason, my brain is telling me that condensing the milk would make it taste sweeter. It's typically sweet in. Oh, is it, it's like, do they add like artificial sweetener, or is it just sweeter because they because the milk is more dense and that does something to it? They do put sugar in it. Okay. I mean, you're selling me more and more on the condensed milk. I've got quite the sweet tooth. Bought, my, bought myself a pack of my favorite candy, High Chews, the other day, and I was I, I was I was down in them more than more than any man rightfully should in a single sitting. What's that gold cat statue? That is the statue of endless fortune. You can buy it at the casino in the desert for one million gold, and every day it gives you a chance for either an iridium bar, um. A gold bar, an Omni Geode, or a Diamond, I think are the four options. But on a villager's birthday, it'll give you a gift that that villager loves. Like, today is Kent's birthday, so it gives me roasted hazelnuts. Because that is a loved gift for, for my guy, Kent. Chug a can of it and let us know the results. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time I've drank a can of something that you're not supposed to really drink. Like, I drank that can of, like, orange juice concentrate like a few like a few months back because I've never had orange juice in the can so I didn't real I didn't realize frozen orange juice wasn't just like orange juice that you could like thaw out and drink I thought <laughs> I didn't realize you're supposed to mix it up so it, it wouldn't wouldn't be my first experience with something like that can we gift the gold yam in the in the Junimos the gold yam by the Junimos to Linus since he deserves it. I'm down. Linus deserves all the good things in the world, so I will go I will go grab a gold yam for for the golden man. Look at these Junimos dancing amongst the parsnips already. They're they're fully grown. Look at that. Alright, we're looking for a gold yam. That's the one there. Perfect. And it clears out a spot in the chest. Condensed orange juice. Yeah, it was it was not the most pleasant thing to drink. That's for sure. I, I would definitely not recommend drinking like or like concentrated orange juice or orange juice concentrate. They tell you to mix it with like water for a reason. I still definitely want to try it. I want I want to try drinking the frozen orange juice concentrate like the proper way. Because I've I've heard time and again that it's just much better than like the average store bought orange juice. It's much less like acidic. Leans much more into the, like the natural sweetness of oranges, which is uh, definitely more my speed. That's one of the things I love like about eating actual oranges, like a mandarin orange. The sweetness involved in that, ooh, it's so good. One to three parts water. I couldn't tell you. I did. I did it one to zero parts water, and uh, 
and the results were not pleasant, I'll tell you that. It was like kind of like drinking orange sludge, which sounds like it could be like a gross drink from a 90s Saturday morning cartoon. Like they go down to the local pizzeria and get themselves some orange sludge alongside their their pepperoni and zucchini pizzas. Probably not zucchini. Zucchini is a little too uh, a little too millennial for that time. Even though that is the millennial time, but that's when millennials were like first like born and young. It, it wasn't they weren't making the media. The media. Don't like orange juice because of the pulp. And the acidity isn't nice either. You can definitely get pulp-free orange juice. I don't know if the orange juice, uh, like, concentrate, the frozen orange juice concentrate you can get has pulp in it or not. From my experience with it, I was unable to discern any pulp because I was so focused on the extremely horrifically concentrated orange flavor. <laughs> that I wasn't able to, to make heads or tails of any pulp in there, but you could probably get stuff without the pulp too. What's the reason for filling the silo every day instead of once a week? It is, oh, I could have I could have given a gift to Linus yesterday. That's okay, it's, we still got multiple days this week. Um, The reason I go and put hay in the silo every day instead of weekly or something like that is mostly for my own state of mind. It's a habit that I've built up so that I know that I keep the silo topped up. Whereas if I only did it once a week, I feel like I'd be more liable to forget. And then eventually I'd remember and be like, oh, I don't think I've filled up the silo in a while. And I'd go over and see it was like empty and the animals were all sad. And that makes me sad. So in order to avoid as much sadness as possible, I do it daily instead. A warm rain is a pleasant way to get clean. Amen, sir. Get a Linus update. We are currently at just shy of five hearts with Linus, about halfway there. We have access to his four heart events, the uh, the wild bait event. What time do you have to... Oh, I forgot to give him the yam. I forgot to give him the yam. We'll give him the yam tomorrow. It's fine. What time, what time do I have to go over there in order to get the the four heart event. It's like late, right? I I remember getting it late and late at night during the Master Angler challenge. I don't know if that's just cuz that's when I happened to get it or if that's because that's the only time you really can get it. 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. Okay. So we'll probably do it post festival in order in order to save having to wait around a whole day, similar to what we did with the Feast of the Winter Star to get his other other heart event. So after the egg festival, we can definitely go and do that and get the wild bait out of the way. Not the cursed heart event. I don't know. If, I don't see anything wrong with the with Linus's four heart event. Like I said during the Master Angler Challenge, it's a com it's a completely normal, not at all strange, extremely natural and innocent four heart event. Haven't danced with Elliot or Haley yet at the flower dance. Elliot's been waiting waiting quite a while. I think we've uh, we've missed out on dancing with him for like a couple of years now, right? Might might be Elliot's time to shine. Innocent isn't the best word. It it does have a certain connotation to it, I suppose. I probably could have picked a better word there. Here you go, sir. Wait, before before you go, I'll, I'll leave you to your privacy. I just wanted to have a quick morning chat with you. You can learn to survive in the wild. I have. I think we all have a hidden urge to return to nature. It's just a little scary to make that leap. Leap a lot mention? I don't know if I have a hidden urge to return to nature. I don't mind being out in nature, but I, I usually like heading home too and being like inside amongst my my cozy worldly comforts i think a healthy balance of nature and you know and living in a house instead of a instead of a tent is probably where i'm at personally 
do do a little hiking, but also be able to come home and sleep on a nice queen size mattress. You like AC and heating more? Yeah, there's also that. <laughs> where am I? Where am I going here? I'm trying to put away all my little goodies. Yeah, like the idea of growing food in the backyard. I think that's pretty cool. If I were to do like anything more more naturalistically inclined, I would probably like want to like have a little garden or something. I'm not in a position right now where I realistically can have a garden. I guess I could have like a little like garden bed or something. I could probably get that set up if I really put my mind to it. I think that could be fun for sure. You need a bathroom camping is not for you. That's fair. That's, you know, going go into the bathroom in nature is, is not a dignified experience most of the time. I can't blame you for that one. Whose birthday is it today? It's Vincent's birthday. Sorry, Vincent. Your cake is mine. I'm sure, I'm sure your mom will give you some nice lentil soup, though. If they ever do a little garden, share some pics? I would love to, yeah. I think that would be that would be very fun. I feel like it would just be very fulfilling to see the little crops that you that you're growing, just like nurture them and see them actually grow big and strong and eventually, eventually have like fruit or vegetables or whatever growing. It would take a long time. It's one of those like delayed gratification things. But delayed gratification oftentimes is the best kind of gratification. Why am I collecting so many items? I'm kind of just like a hoarder. <laughs> There's no really good reason to keep things like the chocolate cakes or all these little like other ancillary gifts that I get from, from people in the mail. But I don't know. I just like to collect them so that I so that I have them. I can look back and see like how far we've come. I feel like I feel like keeping items like that helps to tell a story. And that's and that's just, you know, part of the fun for me. We're never gonna use all these items. Don't don't worry about that. Like we're gonna, <laughs> there's not gonna come a time when we run out of chocolate cakes. At least not in my lifetime. Unless I get unless I get get transported to Fractured Farm myself, I'm gonna be eating all those chocolate cakes for sure. I typically prefer vanilla to chocolate as far as like flavors go. But in the context of a cake, I think I would probably take a chocolate cake over a vanilla cake. I mean, my favorite type of cake is Black Forest, which is predominantly chocolate. Like, vanilla just does not seem like a flavor that lends itself that well to, to a cake. Vanilla ice cream, on the other hand, if we're, if we're going to the, into the world of ice cream, that's where it truly shines. Yeah, too bland as a, as a cake. I feel like vanilla can be a good, like, secondary, accentuary flavor to a cake. If it's not the main focus, but it's there to complement the other flavors, I think that's where vanilla shines most as in, in cake form. But yeah, like a vanilla-centric cake. A, a vanilla ice cream cake could be could be good, but that but I'm more focused on the ice cream aspect of that than the cake, so I think that makes sense. Vanilla cake can be delicious if it's baked well. I would believe that. Yeah, I feel like you know not all the not all vanilla cakes are made equal. You're a hater of ice cream cake, and you're not afraid to admit it. This is a bold stance to take. Ice cream and cake, some of the most beloved food items on the planet. You combine them and and they're even better somehow, at least in my opinion. But you know, if you don't like it, it's not my not my place to judge. Every, everyone likes different kinds of foods. And I will not be a food shamer. At least not today. <laughs> Catch me in a different mood, and I maybe I'll die on the hill that ice cream cake is the best food. But but that's not today. We're, we're chill today. 
What is ice cream cake? It's cake made of ice cream. <laughs> I don't really know the specifications of it beyond that. I don't know how to make an ice cream cake. And I don't know what makes it distinctly different from just ice cream shaped like a rectangle. But gosh darn do I love it. The major downside of an ice cream cake is that it's extremely easy to, like, leave it in a freezer for too long, and then you want to go and eat the ice cream cake, but you have to, like, wait for it to, like, thaw a little bit, because you cut into it, and you're, like, you're going to break your knife if you cut into it too soon, because it's so, it's so frozen. But if you get it at the right temperature, at the right consistency, oh, man, that is to die for, in my opinion. I'll just slip in a little later and have some food. I'm eyeing that scrumptious looking pie. What kind of pie? Maybe there's like a quiche in here somewhere, an egg pie. Well, those eggs were laid just this morning. See, they're still warm. Is that safe? Is that safe to eat? <laughs> Probably. I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. You're going to feed me eggs. I'm not going to. I'm going to need some hot sauce, kid. Might lurk for a bit, no worries, Benny. Alright, quick photo op, and then we're just gonna go do the go do the egg hunt here, I think. Say cheese! Got some bunny emojis in chat. The most royal bunny you've ever seen. Quick hydration break so I can pre mentally prepare myself for the egg hunt. Let's do it. I made a, I made a bit of a fool of myself during the Stardew Expanded Egg Hunt because I had no idea where all the eggs were. <laughs> I still won. I did still win that hunt. But not as handily as I would have liked to, so so I gotta I gotta pull out all the stops today. I'm gunning for 16 eggs here. 16 eggs, and I'm a happy camper. It's a little bit ambitious. I feel like I usually get around 15, maybe even 14 sometimes. All right, here we go. We got this. Just follow, follow the route. Don't deviate from the route. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine, kid. Oh, that was a good, that was a good egg grab right there. I, I think I stepped a little bit too far. Good egg grab, good egg grab. There's a certain finesse to the egg grab, to like the distance egg grab. Like that, perfect, that was a good one. All right, we gotta do gravestone skip here, gravestone skip. All right, we, we didn't hit the gravestone, that's good. It's basically a run ender if you hit that gravestone. No no offense to, to Mona of who the gravestone is for, but, but it's not what we're here for right now. Ooh, I, I, I feel like I almost missed that one. Oh, I almost missed that one too, that was a little spooky. Come on, around Pam's house here. I feel like Pam's house is bigger than the trailer. Okay, was that 16 eggs? I think that was 16. I think we got 16. I think that was a last minute 16th egg right there. Yo, 16, baby. It's not every not every year that you get a 16 egg hunt. Hunt. <laughs> a 16 egg egg hunt. Do I get extra extra money for that one? Was there ever any doubt? Received a quick thousand bucks. I feel like they should give you like for winning the egg festival, you should get a hundred gold per egg instead of just like a flat thousand. I think that would be be more fun. Incentivize getting like higher egg values. I think I can just warp to the mountains and get and get Linus's heart event now, can't I? Bam. Hello, sir. What are you doing out on this eve of the egg festival? Well, not eve, I suppose. It's like a it's like a post eve. Come stand next to the fire pit. It feels great. I do love the the shooting stars and the reflection over there. Adds a nice bit of ambiance. I was hoping you'd come by sometime. 
Yeah, the Earth Obelisk is coming in more clutch than I would have thought. It, it just happened to work out that way for befriending Linus here. I wanted to say sorry for mistrusting you at first. Most people don't treat me well, so I've learned to be cautious. Plus, you're dressed like a like a princess, so like I, <laughs> what you what you expect me to do? But you've been uncommonly nice to me. You're a unique person. I consider you a good friend. Why, thank you. I consider you roughly a five heart friend. You're like halfway to best friend status. Just, you know, gut instinct. I want to show you something. Come inside. Ooh. Like a good surprise. Just no comment. Just no comment. <laughs> there we go. See this? It's a special kind of fish bait that I made. Let's go! Top quality stuff. I'd eat it myself. I probably wouldn't, knowing the recipe, but... <laughs> <laughs> Learned how to craft wild bait, baby! He's like, aha! Achievement unlocked! There we go. Easy as that. Not, not a bad little heart event to knock out. Now we have the wild bait recipe for whenever we get that goal. Perfect. Holly Claire, welcome on in. Hello from Scotland. Hello from hello from Canada. What a what a worldly stream we've got here. You know, like eating fiber, bug meat, and slime. I'm not gonna diss it because I've never tried it. All I'm gonna say, like people people do eat bug meat. They do eat fiber. I don't know if slime is part of any culture's, you know, traditional kind of dish. I, f I think when I think of slime, I more think of like YouTube videos geared towards seven-year-old children. Jello is basically slime. I don't think Jello is slime. I, I feel like Jello is not slimy enough to be slime. Jello is I mean, I mean, it sounds, when I put it this way, it sounds just so obvious, but jello is gelatinous. Slime is not particularly gelatinous. Slime is more, like, sticky. We got here pizza from Shane. Thank you. See, that's more of the context when, you, when you're when you happy to get a pizza, if you just randomly get one in the mail from your best friend, instead of getting one as a Christmas gift. A Christmas gift, you want something a little more stand out than a pizza, at least in my opinion. Uh, oh, I can go give Linus a gift today. My bad, my bad. New day, new gift. It is Haley's birthday. It feels a little weird not going and giving her a present, but... Uh, but Chloe, we are not today. Chloe, Beatrix has no particular affinity for Haley, more so than any of her other friends at this point, so. And and most of her friends, she does not go out of the way to give gifts on their birthday. Not anymore, anyway. There's one exception to that, and I'm pretty sure we all know who it is. <laughs> Is that seven hearts? Is I I think it's only six hearts, right? That's six hearts, okay. Six hearts, but we're moving on up quick. Homie. Linus is the only one that actually practices hygiene. Now that I think about it, I think you're kind of right. <laughs> I mean, none of the other houses even have, like, bathrooms or anything, right? So, it's a little bit cursed when you start thinking about it too much. Maybe except for Harvey. I guess, like... Like, the only place you really see, like, like a bathroom in any capacity in Stardew Valley is in the, uh, the bathhouse, right? In, like, the changing rooms and stuff, there's, like, uh, there's, like, toiletries and stuff there. 
So maybe everyone just uses that. Which begs the question, what the heck do they do for the first season when you can't get to the bathhouse? Best not to think about it, probably. Oh, sorry to interrupt, Linus. I just want to give you your daily, or your, I guess your, your twice-weekly rabbit's foot here. The crisp air of the wilderness is all I care to know. What a legend. He is literally peeing. There is no canonical evidence of that. Maybe he just likes to go and hide in the bushes in the morning, every morning. <laughs> you know? We we all in, we all assume one thing. We all assume that Linus is going back there to 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 relieve himself in the morning, but could be any number of things. I think we're at just about with that with that gift there. We're probably at six and a half hearts, right? Yeah, just just around six and a half hearts. Looking pretty good. Uh, off to bed. Can't wait for the eight heart event. Eight heart event gives you friendship as well, right? It's the one with Robin and Linus is like, and you're like, I want Linus to live on my farm with me, except you don't say that. And then he's like, thank you. I knew you were going to say that you wanted me to live on your farm with you, but I respect you for not to, for not doing that. Here is a voucher for 50 free friendship points to be redeemed with me at your earliest convenience. And we're like, Pog, redeem it now. I think that's basically how it goes. An entire, an, you get a whole heart for that one, 250 friendship points? Yo, that is, uh, <laughs> that is very much go worth going for then. All right. That's rare that you get that many, uh, that you get that many friendship points out of a single heart event. Most of the time it's only like, like 50 or something like that, which is not bad. It's more than you get for just like talking to the person, but, uh, a 250 is, is very welcome indeed. Especially for one of these befriending goals where we have to go all the way to 10 hearts rather than just to 8 hearts. Why the mini fridge instead of a chest? Because we're not able to craft chests just yet. All the chests you currently see in my house were obtained via night market shenanigans. And prior to the night market, mini fridges were basically the only thing I could get that gave me extra storage. So it was, it was pretty much... The way we had to go and technically i mean there's still a way that i could gain access to new storage but i, I like using our little night market exploit for for lack of a better term in order to get more chests more parsnips looking at this nautilus shell makes me feel a different kind of way now because i've been i've recently been reading uh uzumaki which is a graphic novel by, by Junji Ito, famous horror manga author. I got I got it, I got like the graphic novel, like a nice hardcover version of, of Uzumaki for Christmas from my from my mom. I think it was on like one of my it was on a wish list for me at some point. And it's a very it's a very spooky story. I'm not gonna get into the into the grisly details here. But let's just say You'll never look at spirals the same way again. <laughs> Nothing else going on today. I think we I think we're basically just sleeping until the flower dance. Well, we'll, we'll go and give gifts to Linus of course, but that's the next main event to pay attention to here. You don't have the stomach or nerves for horror, but that sounds cool. I feel like I'm definitely an outlier as a person who enjoys um, 
<laughs> who enjoys both like the cozy, warm, cuddly vibes of Stardew Valley and, and similar games, these nice, wholesome, happy times, and like some of the most extreme, terrifying, grotesque horror that exists out there. I'm I'm down for both ends of the spectrum. Most people fall on one or the other, or somewhere in between, but uh, but I, I split the difference. The best of both worlds, exactly. Don't like horror at all, but your favorite podcast is a horror one. I feel like there is a decent amount of people who enjoy like, seeing other people experience horror, or, like, hearing about people's experiences with horror, and, like, having, having, like, having, like, a film reviewer, for example, filter a horror movie through them so that you can sort of experience it vicariously without having to worry about the, uh, about actually experiencing the horror of the, of the media for yourself. I feel like that's, that's where a lot of people land, ultimately, is, like, they, they, they're intrigued like, like the morbid curiosity gets to the best gets the best of a lot of people sometimes when it comes to horror movies, but a lot of people won't actually go and watch them for the most part, and will instead just like watch uh watch like Ryan Hollinger or something like that. Ooh, prehistoric skull is that? This is definitely a mammalian skull. You heard it here first. You read Wikipedia or watch a YouTube synopsis because you're scared. That's fair. That's totally fine, too. I, I also, like, I should say, I don't think that's, like, a bad way to experience horror, necessarily. I think it's a totally, totally fine way to experience, like, the stories and the themes that are on display without having to subject yourself to, you know, possibly very anxiety-inducing events that are being portrayed in the movie or film or book or whatever. Or game. I guess it's a bit different when people watch, like... Like, if you watch, like, Markiplier do a Let's Play of a horror game or something like that. Because then you're still experiencing the scares alongside him. Like, you'll, you'll still get the effect of the jump scare most of the time, unless there's, like, a jump scare warning in a video. But, uh... But it's, but it's lessened... I think, personally, by the fact that, uh, you got someone there to experience it, like, alongside you, right? Even even though, obviously, we're not gonna get too parasocial here, like, you're not there with the, with the Let's Player actually experiencing it in real time with them. Beatrix, how are you doing? I've enclosed some instructions on how to make one of my favorite fish recipes. Linus, I hate to, thank you for the fish taco recipe, but I, I hate to gripe on this. Why didn't you capitalize this H, my guy? Come on, man. Our, I mean, I know we're we're becoming good friends, but but best friends use proper grammar with each other because it shows respect. Or they speak in like their own like coded language. <laughs> there's 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 no in between. You gonna watch the Last of Us playthrough somehow? Experiencing a second hand definitely makes it less bad. I will say, I don't play a lot of horror games. I, I, I've, I've watched a decent amount of horror movies, and I've read, like, my fair share of Stephen King, King books. But when it comes to games, I don't know, I just, I, I, maybe it's just they're not, uh, like, the way most horror games are, is, like, the gameplay of them doesn't, uh, appeal to me as much as a lot of other games. Yeah, I think we're one gift away here from from Eight Hearts with Linus, by the way. Which will then... So we're basically one gift away from Nine Hearts with Linus, because we can get the Eight Hearts and then get the Eight Heart event pretty much right after. Because I think it's just you have to, like, leave from Robin's house at some time during the day. I don't know the time frame of it exactly, but I'm pretty sure you activate the, that Heart event by leaving from her house, and then that triggers everything. Ooh, little Emily dance. A little bit too early for the song here, because <laughs> Emily dance at the flower dance would have been kind of a kind of a goaded music pick for sure. But that's okay. 
Maybe we'll get something even better when we go to the flower dance. Who's to say? Also, this oyster made quite the journey. How the heck did this oyster wash up over here? That is the most impressive thing I've seen in, in quite some time, honestly. From an oyster, especially. Holy moly. You like dark games like Little Misfortune? The, my most recent experience with a horror game was actually pretty recent. It was, um... Actually, it might have just been last week. It hasn't been that long. I went and hung out with some friends. Some friends that I haven't seen in a while. And we were hanging out at one of my friend's houses. And he had a... He has, like, a PlayStation 5 with, like, the PSVR headset and everything. He's got, like, a whole big setup. And... And they got me to play Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted, the, like the VR version of Five Nights at Freddy's, to try and like scare the ever-living daylights out of me. Which was uh, extremely anxiety-inducing. I'd never... I've... I think that was like one of my first experiences with VR. I've, I've played a little tiny bit of VR like years and years ago. But this was like my first ex real experience with VR in a, in a very long time. And they just threw me into the deep end. It was Help Wanted One. I don't think I don't think he had Help Wanted Two. But I'd still I'd never played either of them, so. And it was I I had a great time with it. I like I was it was very anxiety inducing and stressful and heart pounding. But that's what you want out of a game like that, right? You want it to be uh I mean at least that's why a lot of people play horror games, and that's why a lot of people don't play horror games is because of that feeling and they don't like it. But I personally do enjoy the feeling, at least from time to time. I will proudly say, though, they got me to play through, like, in Help Wanted, it's like, basically, there are recreations of the first three FNAF games? Like, F FNAF 1, 2, and 3, I think, are in there. Maybe 4, I don't remember. I, I the, on the only one that I played, I played through all the nights that were available for Help Wanted, uh, or for from the first Five Nights at Freddy's game, FNAF 1, the recreation there. I played through all four of those nights, and I did not die a single time. I did. I never got jump scared. It was still extremely, extremely stressful, just trying to keep track of everything and, and maintaining your power and and all that good stuff. And watching the animatronics actually like physically walk up next to you, next to the door. It's it's a it's a quite a terrifying feeling. But I never actually died, so I was I was pretty pretty proud of myself for that. Which also means I never got the, you know, the release of actually being jump scared and realizing that I was going to be okay. My brain never got that feeling, so it was just kind of like on the edge for that entire time. First three are recreated with a few mini games inspired by four. Gotcha, gotcha. Alright. Y'all ready to dance with some flowers? Flower dance moment. I wonder if uh, Concerned Ape will do anything with this flower dance area in 1.6. Like, make it more accessible somehow? Like, you only come over here literally for the flower dance, and, and that's it. I wonder if you could, if you could, like, make it more... I gave it, you know, just a little, little bigger of a reason to exist. Who haven't we danced with other than Haley? I don't think we danced with Elliot. We haven't danced with Elliot. We haven't danced with... Have we danced with Abigail? We might not have danced with Alex either. I think Elliot, Alex, and Haley, maybe? I think that's that, sound, that feels right to me. I think we did dance with Abigail. Maybe we danced with Elliot? We haven't danced with Alex or Haley for sure, so we'll, we'll, we'll give Alex his due day. Why not? Where's Alex at? Alex and Haley, they're both up here, coincidentally enough. I'm just enjoying the scenery, hee <laughs> hee. Alright, Haley, do you want to dance instead? <laughs> I just don't, I just don't like the vibes that Alex was giving off right there. I'm just, I'm, I mean, you know, I think, I think we're gonna, oh yeah, we'll, we'll okay, we'll ask Haley to be my dance partner. 
and we'll go talk to Linus as well, because because why wouldn't you, right? Hello there, it's nice of you to talk to me. Spring is almost over, what a shame. It's alright. Spring is enjoyable, but you know, summer is, isn't bad itself. The outfit fits for Haley or Elliot. This is a bit of a snoozy song to do the flower dance to. Should we, should we, should we switch up songs or should we wait for the next one? I honestly don't even know. We can chat with the others, yeah, but we do chat with them every year, and they always say the same thing. So I don't, I don't feel my my social battery is dying out <laughs> to talk to all these people all the time. You befriended so many people at this point. All right, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna pop over to my playlist. We're gonna jump to the next song, and whatever that song is, that's our flower dance song. Nope, can't do. It's got to have some energy to it. Give me some energy here. That's energy, but it's not it's not quite right. Calico Desert. Now nah, I'm just getting too picky. All right, next next song for real. Next song for real. Oh, <laughs> it's like it was planned. It wasn't, I swear. Dance, dance. <laughs> dance with the bees. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> that literally, I was literally just clicking the button to go and shuffle through the playlist. It's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Wait, why does it kind of weirdly fit though? Look at them dance. They're like, oh no, not the bees, not the bees! <laughs> don't bees dance when they're like, is, don't they do like a mating dance or something like that? I don't know. <laughs> don't, don't read too much into it. That was fun, time to go home. Dun, dun, dun. This is a bop, absolutely. They're, everyone's into it, and how could they not be? Dancing to the rhythm of the bees this springtime. It is so much fun and we get to enjoy their tunny. And... <laughs> I, 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 I fell apart. It fell apart at the end there. I was, I was feeling strong to start with. D minus. D minus for that rhyme. Solid effort. <laughs> Just kind of tapered off at the end there. I lost confidence. Tomorrow we get the heart event. Do we? Was that is that are we at eight hearts with Linus now? Not quite eight hearts. And we and we've already given him two gifts. We're gonna have to wait for next week for the for the eight heart event. That's okay. It's not not far off at the very least. Concerned Ape should make the B song official. It will be once haunted chocolate drops. Maybe not for the flower dance, but for the uh <laughs> For for B under for the B boss. Do you think the B boss is gonna have a name or is it just gonna be like called B boss, like Big B boss? It's got it's got to have a name, right? Concerned Ape doesn't strike me as, as a developer that would just be like, I made this big, vibrant like boss fight against this big queen bee with this an amazing soundtrack and beautiful art. What am I going to name it? Eh, just B-Boss. It's fine. <laughs> Ives and Honey. The Honey Dance. I wonder if he'll actually change the name of the song when Haunted Chalk the Tear drops, or if it'll just say B underscore boss dot OGG for the rest of time in Memorial. I'd be fine either way. I'd, I'd be. I, it would take me a while to get used to calling it something else, but I would be. I'd be down for it. But the bee itself that you fight, there's a non-zero chance that that the bee boss that you fight in Haunted Chocolatier will be named Beatrix, and my soul will leave my body in that moment. B U 
beautiful waltz. B underscore boss dot OGG could be the this version and the final version of the game could be an extended with it one with a different name. I would be so happy. I would be I would love that if, if if we got to that point in Haunted Chocolatier and we hear the song and everyone's going crazy for it, and then it reaches where the end of the song would be, and it keeps going into a new part that we've never heard before. Honey, wake up. B underscore boss dot OGG DLC just dropped. I'd be I'd be so pumped. We could roll Iridium Snake Milk, that's true. One of those goals we don't think about that often, but it is it is still in there. There are definitely some eclectic goals that, that we have not yet rolled, and every time we do roll, we get closer. I'd say it should be filled with puns for the OST. Yeah, Concerned Ape seems like the kind of guy who, who loves himself a good pun. I think he's not going to pass up on the opportunity for to throw some B puns in there somewhere. And other puns as well, I'm sure. What's been the most difficult task in the randomizer so far? Who's going to tell him? The bomb? <laughs> well, there's one task, I mean, that's undoubtedly the most time-consuming. Whether it was the most difficult was uh, is, is up to your personal definition of difficult, I suppose. I would say probably the gold clock was, I mean, it was, was it, I don't know if I'd classify it as the most difficult, honestly. Yo, Ancient Doll, Pog. We gotta wait for 9 a.m. for Robins to open, and then I think we can activate that hard event, right? Yeah, 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 we're good. Solar panel was rough, for sure. We've all collectively put it out of our mind at this point, but I think there is a real argument to be made that befriending the dwarf, our very first goal, goal number one, is still the hardest goal that we've had. Which makes sense to a certain degree. I mean, obviously, your very first goal, you don't have that many resources available to you. You gotta build up. And especially getting a goal like that where you have to get all four dwarf scrolls and, and still avoid, like, leveling up and all that stuff. And it's, it's a whole big mess of things that you have to worry about. And, uh... And it was, it was a lot, for sure. You're right, though, that the solar panel, getting, like, the ginger and stuff for that solar panel recipe was... Absolutely... <laughs> it was absolutely quite a journey, for sure. Also, never forget the, uh, the hash brown quest, <laughs> the little hash brown side quest to get the complete breakfast way back in the day. That was a fun time, too. Blue Discus is a worthy mention. Blue Discus just because it was the first Ginger Island related goal and it came so early that getting to Ginger Island was a pretty daunting prospect. Yeah, that's a good call. Randomizer just likes to casually bully. How are you doing, my, by the way, Maru? It's been a while. Do you have fun working on the farm? Chat, thumbs up if, you, if you're having fun. Thumbs down if you're not having fun. While working on the farm. Well, we're all working on the farm together, so I can't be the only one to answer this question. Xavier hitting me with the thumbs down. What can I do to put you in a thumbs up kind of mood today? I'm glad we're all on the same page here. Good, to, good to see. Well, that's good, isn't it? I'd say so. Mario's pretty great. Cash dropped a B emoji in the mix there. I'm confused because bees don't have thumbs. By all known laws of, of gesticulations, bees should not be able to give thumbs up. But the bee does it anyway because they don't care what humans think is impossible. Wait, why did I talk to Robin? <laughs> I I haven't even befriended Robin. I just I just went and talked to her because I was like in the mood, I guess. How did Willie get up here too? Willie Willie and Lewis both sitting above the dwarf right now? It's not right. 
It's not right. It's good to take a break from work every now and then. Sorry I didn't hear you past my 12 mil million hard-earned gold. I usually stay inside, but when I do go to when I do but I do go to the beach now and then. Pretty much only when it's raining though. My man's is literally just telling me his schedule beat for beat. For some reason, staring off into the bleak horizon makes me feel I don't know. It's like it's like it's worthwhile to keep pushing on, I guess. I didn't expect to to get so deep all of a sudden. I'm 14 and this is deep. That's nice though. It's nice. Linus, salmon berry season is behind us, my friends. I'm I'm sorry to tell you. Also, where's your basket? I got you that basket back. Why aren't you using it? Oh my gosh, so rude. So rude. Eep! Linus jump scare? It's Linus, right? You've been living next to this man for 25 years, Robin. <laughs> he comes to every town festival. The disrespect. Put some respect on my boy Linus's name. Are you hungry? I can make some lunch. How about some leftover cave carrot stew? Oh, he's so not. He's so so humble. So humble. Linus did say we treat him better than most people. It's true. It's 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 got to have been a a long twenty five years for Linus, but I'm glad he's still keeping an optimistic mindset. Beatrix, you look like you have something to say. I'd like Linus to, to move on the farm with me. No, I'm just pleased that Linus is doing well. Just suddenly blurred out. Linus, will you be my best friend forever? On the farm? <laughs> Thanks, Beatrix. You had me worried there. I thought you were going to ask me to move on the farm or something with you, wink. Linus is concerned, eh? For real? He sees through the code of the game. I consider you my closest friend in the valley. You've never tried to fix me. You respect my way of life, even if you don't understand it. And you gave me so many, so many rabbit's feet. You can, you could probably stop with that, but... <laughs> they must know about something about rabbit's feet that I don't, to, to enjoy them this much is all I'm gonna say. Ripe sweet aroma. The sweet aroma of ripe berries. Oh, the little hop. <laughs> Onward he goes. Perfect. So you're telling me that was a full friendship heart with- That is a full friendship heart with Linus. Holy moly. We are like two gifts away from from completing this goal. Not bad at all. That went pretty fast, all things considered. I mean, getting the, the Blackberry Basket and that, and that heart event there, that was basically two free hearts, so... That effectively turned Linus into like one of the... one of the bachelors slash bachelorettes that you can... Like, it basically turned him into an 8-heart person rather than a 10-heart, I guess. <laughs> one more gift in a talk. I think we might have to do a little more than one more gift in a talk, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm underestimating just how effective rabbit's feet are. Either way. Oh, I gotta go let my Junimos harvest. I completely forgot. Or should I let the Junimos harvest? I probably should, huh? Let, let them... Let them gather all the parsnips. They've been dancing and frolicking amongst the parsnips for oh so long. Be free. Be free, my Junimo friends. Get yourself as many parsnips as you can. A little parsnip party. Get some parsnip emojis in chat. Parsnip emojis. Best of luck. <laughs> Got carrot emojis. That's probably about the closest we're gonna get, huh? Yeah, parsnips and carrots are like basically the same thing, so I'm 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 willing to take it. You're eating garlic bread. I am jealous. <laughs> I have not I've not had garlic bread in quite a long time, to be honest with you, and and I don't have a good reason for for not having it. It's delicious. 
That's really all you need to know about it, honestly. Rutabagas? I think, I'm pretty sure we've had this discussion before, but I still don't really know what a rutabaga is. Is it in and amongst the carrot family? It's like a, it's like a similar vibe to a carrot, but not a carrot, like a parsnip is. It's a food. <laughs> All right, at least we're on the same page in that regard. I knew that one. I knew that one. Beyond that, I started to lose the plot a little bit. Also called a swede, closer to a turnip. I've always most closely associated rutabagas in my brain with beets, which is probably incorrect. But it's it's the it's the line that my brain has drawn for some reason, the line on the cork board of my brain. Are we doing corn or sunflowers for summer? We could do corn and that would lead into fall as well. Corn is available for both. Or we could do star fruit or sunflowers. What are we feeling? I feel particularly sunny today. I guess I could use some sun given how how cold and gray it is outside right now. Because in fall, I think we're going to have to go with corn regardless, right? So we could probably mix it up a little bit in summer and just have something a little bit special. I guess sunflowers would also go into fall, right? Now that I'm thinking about it. Golden pumpkins for fall. Oh, we could do wheat in fall, I guess. That's true. Junimos, do you like do you guys need some coffee or something? Look, I I know I appreciate that you're taking your time and handling all these parsnips with care. But like, tick tock, I gotta get to the next season here. I need to befriend my boy. You about sunflowers? This is a pullable occasion. You know what? Why not? Just just for funsies. We like to do a little poll every now and again. What should we grow this summer? What are our options? We have star fruit. If we're going with the with this golden yellowish theme, we've got star fruit, you got sunflowers, and you've got corn, right? Corn is the other option. Is wheat an option in summer? Wheat is an option in, sun, in summer. Melons are an option, but they're not particularly golden. They taste golden. All right, we'll go. We can go wheat as well. See how people are feeling. Rose gold. Like Pink Gold Peach, my favorite Mario Kart character. Right, the Junimos, they're 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 still figuring stuff out. This fella's <laughs> he's he's trying to blend in with the statue and the large plush Junimo. I respect it. You're over here getting warm by the fire. What is this? What are you doing over here? Hello? Calculus? Parent, parent is Axiom. Calculus looks really happy today. Getting to wander over and see the parsnip fields in action. I don't blame you. Watching them is making you nervous. They're clo they're so close. They're so cl oh my don't walk away. Don't walk away from the parsnips. What are you doing? <laughs> it's like they don't realize there's still four parsnips to go. They quit at five. Walk. Do they stop at five? Are they are they are they done? They're done for the day. Watching them makes it slower. All right, I'll watch Junimo never harvests. I'll just I'll just stare at the ocean for a little while. Where the heck does this even go on the map? 
secret woods. Like this, there's there's uncharted territory. There's a whole island over there that we've never seen. There's a sapling by the pond. By this pond here. They're still they still have not harvested these four parsnips. Chad, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there we go. Uh, we can move the parsnips elsewhere at least. Look, we're, we're level five farming. We got to start putting in a little more effort ourselves. I think the Junimos were are trying to tell me something here. They're like, "We've we've harvested your crops long enough, pal. It's time for you to put in a little legwork of your own." Where did all my parsnips go? Oh, I just left them in here. I'm, I'm a fool. By the pond with the snails. Thank you, thank you. See it now. Could I combine the flowers in the huts? Combine the flowers in the huts. So, like, move flowers from over here to in here. Oh my gosh, my brain breaks just looking at all the different colors, though. There's a lot of duplicates. Okay. Well, we'll start. We'll just start doing this. Blue Jazz. Is Blue Jazz in any of these? No Blue Jazz in any of these. What What do we have in here? We got Summer Spangles and Tulips. And in here, we have Summer Spangles and Tulips and Fairy Roses. Okay. I can do this. I can do this. I see Fairy Roses here. I don't see any Summer Spangles. Or do you mean condense them between the between the two huts themselves? Because I kind of want the Junimos to have multiple to have to have flowers in in each hut. Well, that does work. You're right about that. Okay. I guess I can put these in here as well. Anything else? We got other fairy roses here. We'll see if there's any. Additions we can make there. Nope. Alright, not bad, not bad. Chests have been... You know, we'll put the fairy roses in. One of these other ones here. Put one in there. Put both of them in there, actually. That's fine. That way, at least all the fairy roses and stuff are in the same place. I feel like I should move these coffee beans out of here. So that it's just flowers in there. And just flowers in there. Where do I keep the coffee beans these days? Boom. It's a heck of a lot of coffee to work through. Holy moly. Those big chests from 1.6 can't come fast enough, I'm telling you. There are fairy roses in both huts. I want the Junimos to be able to enjoy the the flowers of all varieties, no matter what hut they're in. So I'm, I'm happy to... To spread them out a little bit that way. Alright. Summer hath arrived. What does our poll say here? 37% of chat wants sunflowers to 36% of chat wants starfruit. <laughs> oh, I mean... Oh, it just, it just switched to starfruit as I was looking at it. What the heck is this? Our poll says new outfit. I'm kind of I'm kind of digging Beatrix's royal arc right now though. Do both? Do we we could go a little half and half, yeah. Rebescapades, thank you by the way for the two dollars super chat. Thank you so much. So satisfying. <laughs> satisfying set sorting the flowers for you. No worries, I got your back. We can do both. How many sunflower seeds do we have available to us? Well, first and foremost, let's go give Linus his his first gift of the summer. Maybe even his last gift of the summer, depending on how this goes. Where are you hiding? There you are. During all these years, I've discovered a few secrets about life. You'll have to find out for yourself. I mean, I'm 26 years deep and I'm still figuring it out, so... <laughs> no, so close. I can just come out and, like, talk to him at some point, I guess. I guess I can just talk to him tomorrow. 
and that'll probably do it. Rabswar, welcome on in. Good to see you. Should we banana him? I was gonna say, wait, where are you coming at with that one from? We're so close, we're not about to banana him. Well, banana... Oh my gosh, Demetrius is up here again, too. Demetrius, Willie, and Lewis? What are you guys doing? I could take him to the movies. He doesn't like the movies, though. I don't want to, you know, put him through a negative experience that way. Yeah, we'll talk, we'll talk to him tomorrow. And we'll be in a good spot. Let me see. There's, there's got to be sunflower seeds somewhere in here, right? 72 sunflower seeds. Okay. Yo, gold hoe. Is this our first time using the gold hoe? Ooh. <laughs> I got I to get used to, to how this thing works. I think there are times where you just want to use that line, and then other times where the grid is more beneficial. Like the 3x3 the three three grid like that. This feels satisfying, though, for sure. Is it easier to banana the trio or talk to homie? We did a test previously to see if we needed to, to banana people in order to get them off the top of the friends list, and we actually do. Talking to homie does not change anything. At least it didn't the, the time that we tried to do it. Yeah, I think it's I think it's just about banana rama time. Oh, this would be a good one. Look at this, look at this. Ooh, eight out of nine ain't too bad. Satisfying just to be able to hit as many as you can. <laughs> be even more satisfying once we're able to get rid of some of these logs, that's for darn sure. Alright, I think that's everything successfully hoed, right? And we've got... How many sunflower seeds? 72, right? We have 72, which is more than half. What if we just do... We've done this before, where we do like a perimeter of sunflower seeds. We do like a perimeter of flower seeds, so that the the bees up there get it, and, it's, and it just looks nice. And then we'll do the, um, the rest as star fruit. I think I'm happy with that. Okay, so that was 50, which means we need to get 88 star fruit seeds. If my math is is right today. Rebescapades, thank you for the gifted membership, by the way. Thank you so much for giving gift gifting a membership to Sarah Soda Pop. I greatly appreciate the generosity. Thank you so much. That is that is always amazing to see. You're home and I'm still... <laughs> you just got home and I'm still befriending Linus. We're not far off, though, Lisa. You came back at a pretty good time here, as you can see. <laughs> All right. I probably still have some starfruit seeds lingering, don't I? I've got two starfruit seeds, so I just have to go buy 86 from Sandy. 86 of these starfruit seeds. Grocery store was a zoo. And the temperature has fallen about 20 degrees in the last two hours. That's rough. It was pretty busy for us at the grocery store. Like when I went to the grocery store yesterday, too. I think it's uh, people like to stockpile for when it gets like really cold out, obviously. All right, I need to get up to 88, right? So we just need another 11. Okay. The heck is I think we already have this shirt. This little like slimy shirt. I'm pretty sure we got buy these coconuts, though. I feel like, you know, can't hurt to have them. Car good. Happy to hear that. Happy to hear that that, that worked out okay. 
that one star fruit seed at the museum. Oh no. All right, we're saving that one for a special occasion. What occasion that is, I don't necessarily know. Maybe we'll plant it in like a garden pot on the summit after we get perfection or something like that. I probably won't remember to do that. And also, starfruit probably wouldn't be my first choice of crops to do that with, but maybe, maybe. All right, I got to go plant these. I guess I can bring the watering can as well. Should I worry about water? I've only got a copper watering can. It doesn't really matter if they grow in sync with one another, so I think I'm just going to not worry about watering now. It's fine. Some of them will be behind by a day, but that's that's not the end of the world. Also, make sure you do this. Before we get too far along here. Plant that starfruit seed in a garden pot. I don't remember. Am I able to make garden pots yet? Am I, am I allowed to do that? Garden pots, I'm not allowed to make my own yet. I haven't crafted any of them. We haven't gotten that goal. We only have the one that that Evelyn gave us, right? Perfect. Perfectly planned. What did I plant in spring? We did a full season of parsnips. Now we're doing a little sunflower starfruit mishmash. For the for the season of gold. Go figure. I call I called the last stream vod golden days, and now we're we're doing golden crops here. What the heck? It's, it's you know foreshadowing is a literary device, so on and so forth. All right, let's go talk to Linus, and I think just talking to him is actually probably going to be enough because we can't give him any more gifts this week. We've already given him two, but. I think just a little conversation is going to get us there. Dragonic Moon, welcome on in. We are still on Befriend Linus, but I think now we are. We still are. <laughs> How have you been, my young friend? What are we at? What is that, dude? What is that? <laughs> All right, I'll be back tomorrow. I'll be back tomorrow. Mark my words, pal. Have I used the priest? I, I, have, I don't think I've tailored the prehistoric hand axe yet, have I? Maybe I have. I don't know. I just looked at this. I just, I looked, I looked at, obviously these are like tire tracks. These are like, you know, someone burning rubber on the, on the highway here. But doesn't this look like a mouth? Like it looks like a cheeky little like smirk. Like someone's like smirking up to like the left side of their mouth. I never looked at that. It's like a big toothy grin. Freaking me out. The road is smiling at me like it's Mother 3 or something. You like to think that Beatrix just goes around aggressively demanding people to be her friend? I mean, she does kind of treat it as a as an obligation more than as a, as a friendship. At least that's the way she started. I think she's kind of come around. I feel like Beatrix these days is not the same as Beatrix when she started this journey in, in many ways. I think she's grown to be a bit more social. That said, you know, she's still got a job to do at the end of the day. Boom. Caveman shirt! Linus! Twinsies! <laughs> Linus doesn't have, like, this, like, blue tie, though. Like, I'm Fred Flintstone out here. That's so good. All right. Lock it in. Alright, on this, the third day of summer, amidst a nice, warm rainstorm, we're gonna go befriend everyone's favorite man of nature. Let's go do it. There was a leafy shirt in the luau skirt. That's true, we did get that. We have options for... For new uh, outfits, for sure. But what can I say? I'm a, I'm a sucker for I'm a sucker sucker for the royal garb. <laughs> we'll change it up. 
as we always do eventually, but for now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let it ride. Here you go. Is that it? There you go. Ten big hearts with our big happy friend here. A warm rain is a pleasant way to stay clean. Absolutely. I do love a good warm summer rain. He's not wrong. Alright. Linus successfully befriended. At least he he didn't he didn't take a place above our our homie up here, Demetrius, Willie, and Lewis. Should I, should I should I take care of this before we roll our next goal, or should we? Should we, I think I'll roll my next goal and then we'll take care of that. We'll see. We'll do it in that order because I'm always antsy for a goal, especially after a long one like this. Let me stretch my legs. Roll, not roll. Well, yes, roll, but I'm gonna take a hydration break before I do. Team Walnut Room. Are we on teams now? Have we gotten to that point in the randomizer process where people are are making different different teams for different goals? Team Walnut Room. I love it. I don't know what team I would be on. I'm I'm open to all possibilities. I am a true neutral when it comes to the randomizer. I'm just I'm just willing to do whatever it wants to tell me. There are some that would be nice to see for sure. Don't get me wrong, but. Uh, but you know, the randomizer, I trust in its intuition. I trust it to lead us down the right path here. Wherever it takes us, it's gonna tell the right story. Finish this goal. Linus is befriended. We are officially seven goals away from 200. Goal 200 is right on the horizon here. Will we get it this stream? Hard to say. I can't, it can't be a late stream. I can't go super long because I do have to work later in the day. So our time is limited here, but we've still got a decent amount of time. So let's get going. Ship a purple mushroom. Easy peasy. Not a problem at all. The purple goals strike again. Perp mushroom. That's what I'm writing down. Actually, I'm just going to write perp mush. Easy enough. Get some mushroom emojis in chat. Mushroom emojis. One of my favorite emojis, honestly, just from like an aesthetic perspective. It's, it just looks so good. Why do mushrooms look so good? They look so right and they taste so wrong. Well, they taste okay sometimes, but... Alright. I can also unpin the current goal here. There we go. They're just fun little guys, so true. Alright. I'm gonna go grab a purple mushroom or two. I will ship it, and then I'm also gonna grab us a slingshot, and we've got some errands to take care of that way as well. <laughs> I mean, with, with Homie's birthday coming up, we can't have them thinking that uh, that anyone else is, is above them in stature here. We're only a couple weeks away from their birthday. Let's see. Still have 25 bananas locked and loaded. I'll put away the rabbit's feet for right now so that we don't have to, because we don't need to worry about befriending for the time being. Where are my purple mushrooms at? Can you use mushrooms in the slingshot? Probably. <laughs> Hold on a second. You cannot. You cannot use mushrooms in a slingshot. Today I learned. Boom. Get shipped. Goal is not complete until we actually see the shipping screen and they've been shipped, but but they're prime and locked and loaded. Speaking of today, I learned, though, you know what I learned today, chat? That is probably obvious or, like, just natural computer knowledge to a lot of people, but I never realized you could do this. You know how, like, when you want to select, like, you're browsing your computer and you want to select multiple files, either to, like, move them or delete them or or what have you, and you, you like, hold down your left mouse button and you drag and you get that little, like, blue transparent box and it covers them up and you select all of them. It's pretty pretty natural computer behavior. Did you know you can do that with the right mouse button? And when you do it with the right mouse button, it opens up the right-click menu at the same time. 
so that like you can like right click select all of them and then you can just like do whatever you were going to do with them i never knew that I always left click to select and then right click to like delete them or whatever or like do whatever I had to. I never knew you could right click select. It, it, it blew my mind. I just did it by like total accident earlier today and I was like, huh, how about that? It's locked. It's because Lewis knows what's about to, about to come. He knows what's happening. This is not his first rodeo. Morning. Bye. All right. <laughs> Know your place. Know your place. All right, Willie is down here as well. He's actually about to open up shop pretty soon. I think I can get to him before he before he steps inside. All right, snipe him from around the corner here. Oop. Bananas wasted. We're wasting bananas. All right, perfect. <laughs> make him slip on a banana peel at the last second before he goes in the door. We want to make sure they're not going like too low in friendship. Like they're still they're still at ten hearts, but now they're below where they need to be. Three rainbow shells that did not escape my notice either. It was kind of kind of wild spring forage, summer forage even, especially for only being like three days into summer here. Why does this work? Because I think I think it works because, well, number one, I don't know why everyone else go slowly goes up to supersede the dwarf at the top of the list. That is esoteric knowledge to me, but I think why this works to bring them down back below the dwarf is because they have a, a friendship point value that is higher than like the 2500 that you need for N heart. I don't know. I don't know. You know what? I'm I'm starting to just get banana idiot. <laughs> I, I feel kind of bad calling him an idiot, but it's, you know, it's just it's for the memes, it's for the memes. All right. I don't know why it works, it just, it, but it does work. Like how my choice is attack the neighbors instead of gift homie. We've tried gifting homie, we tried that in the past and it just didn't work. Homie is at a, is at a state where they cannot be moved. They, they have to be, they can no, they can't become any better friends with me. But everyone other, uh, there's other people that sometimes think they can become better friends with me, and they're just, they're wrong, I'm sorry to say. I need green algae to rub on my sore toe. Please bring one as soon as you can. Home remedies are going crazy these days. I did talk to them at the festival, that's true. Maybe I just need to never talk to anybody ever again, except for homie. Might be the only solution here. No, my tree! <laughs> Rude. So rude. Oh, I'll take I'll take the wood. It's fine. I was so attached to that tree. That was one of Pi's favorite trees right near his water dish up there. Aw oh, man. Alright, pop those away. Pop this away for for the next occasion in which we need to right click and retrieve more bananas. <laughs> Still makes me happy to think about it. Alright. And lock it in. That's purple mushroom shipped, right? Lest we forget that that's the actual goal we were supposed to be going for. Quick 1250 gold. Not bad. Not bad. We can more clearly see pie now. I guess that's true. Silver limes and all that. Alright. Purple mushy. Done and dusted. Get those mycelium spores out of here. Time to move on. Purple, you have been shipped. It's true. Literally a doctor in town, but hot peppers and algae. Not only was there a doctor in town, there's literally a doctor next to, like, next door to Caroline. <laughs> so, so she's got really got no excuse. All right, finish it up. 194 goals down. We're, we're really in the home stretch here. We're almost up to the final five. This is the final countdown. Ship a coffee bean. I've got a few of those. Let's go ship one. Or 999. Alright. Coffee bean. This could have been bad if we hadn't uh, gone out of our way to get one of these in the past. We would have had to actually go and like kill a dust sprite or two to get this. But since we took care of that ahead of time, 
we're, we're balling. Should we si should we ship a whole stack of coffee beans? I don't want to ship all my coffee beans, but I'm I'd be down to ship like a whole stack of them just just for just for the thrill of it. <laughs> like why not, right? In what other context would you ship 999 coffee beans? I had the idea the other day. I was I was this actually is kind of funny that this is coming up now cuz I had the idea the other day of like a challenge in Stardew to ship I wanted to I wanted to try I I had the idea to try and ship 2 billion of something to see like what happens like when the like the number shipped here when that like overflows beyond like the integer limit and in order to do that you have to ship 2 billion 147 million something of that and I'd be like, is there a way that could that you could feasibly do that without mods? And the way I would think to do it is like through coffee beans, because they're you can grow them and you can get them in pretty mass quantities relatively quickly. But to get that many coffee beans to ship, I started doing like the math on it, and it's it becomes a bit of a logistical nightmare for sure. <laughs> so, you know, maybe we'll table that challenge for another time. Maybe we'll never touch it again. I have no idea, but how many stacks is that? Um, from the math I did, it is somewhere in the neighborhood of it's it's close to sixty thousand, not stacks, but sixty thousand full chests of coffee beans. You would need sixty thousand chests full of coffee beans in order to hold two million of two billion of them. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's it is it's when you when you phrase it like that and think of, you know, how much room you would even need to store that many coffee beans, let alone I mean, you wouldn't need to store them all at once, obviously. You could you could ship them as you go, but but just the the sheer thought of it. <laughs> 2 billion is a massive number. It's it's an insanely large number. It's 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 like like be like, you know, we think of million as big and billion is like it makes million look like a like a stinky grain of sand or something. Anyway, I'm just gonna ship 999 for now and call it a day. <laughs> Only 30,000 big chests. True. That's <laughs> that's pretty true. You wouldn't have enough time in a day to ship them all. You probably wouldn't, even if you like optimized it to the maximum capacity that you could. I just don't think you'd be able to actually physically take that many items to a shipping bin or to like multiple shipping bins if you pl if you built more around in a single day but hey you know never say never happy birthday jazz yeah the 2 2 billion 147 million and whatever is uh is the like it's like the 32 bit integer limit or something is it the is it 32 or 64 bit integer limit i want to say it's the 32 bit signed integer limit which means that any number that goes beyond that that's stored as that data type of in 32 bits would underflow to become like a negative number at that point. I don't know if the game would crash or if it would just look really funky in the in the in the inventory screen. 64 bit is 9 quadrillion. Yeah, I figured 64 bit was like considerably larger. 32 bit is the one that you deal with more often or just more realistic to at least think of even though 2 billion is still insane. Nine quadrillion is, you know, let's not even go there. <laughs> anyway, that's almost 15,000 from a full stack of coffee beans. Take that. Even with mods, it would be a struggle to get them all in the shipping bin? Probably, yeah. <laughs> You'd be there for a long time. All right. Well, the good thing is we don't have to worry about 2 billion coffee beans just now. All we've got to worry about is 200 goals. It's a, it's a much smaller, much more achievable number. And then we'll move on to the next one after that. But for now, goal 195. Knock it off the list. It's done. 34.6% closing in on that 35% as well. What are you looking for? Walnut room cooking goal. 
backpack upgrade, the people are clamoring for a true, like, earth-shaking goal. Walnut room, backpack upgrade, there are, there are many ways to go here. What are you gonna give me, randomizer? What do you feel like in the- what are you in the mood for right now? Craft a bait? You're- you're literally baiting me! What is this? <laughs> the literal bait. That's so good. Alright, bait. Just gonna write down bait. This far in, we can finally make our own bait. Not that we'd ever need to with how much money we have, but... Also, do I have bug meat? <laughs> Do I literally... I don't even know if I have any bug meat. We might have to go get some bug meat to craft this. <laughs> this might actually... This might actually take a second. Because that's all you need, right? For bait. Just, just so we're all on the same page here. Bait. One bug meat. Go find out, I guess. Uh, we have two bug meat. Let's go. I should save one for future crafting recipe possibilities. So we'll just craft one instance of bait right now. Bug meat is a precious resource. Even this, even this far into the challenge, as it turns out. All right, stack it all on here. Might as well have it all in one place like that. Actually, you know what? We'll separate it into its own stack here for now, in case we want to like bait more crab pots or something like that. Goal complete. In the immortal words of the Super Monkey Ball announcer, Goal! Alright. Onward, shall we? Yo, have a good one there, Durmeister. Thank you so much for hanging out, and, uh, and yeah, have a great night. Take care. Alright. Pop yawn back over here as we roll our next goal. 34.8%, 196. It's I always get just such tingly feelings in my stomach and throughout me as I as I get close to these like arbitrary milestones. I can't help it, my brain is just wired for it. Give it to me. Give it to me. Catch an eel Craig! <laughs> Wait, can I even do this? Hold on a minute. Isn't isn't an eel a spring fish? Is it spring? Is it summer? Can I catch this in summer? Craig gets a friend. Spring and fall. Spring and fall. That's not bad. That's not terrible. Okay, fall, fall rain we can do. Fall rain and it's somewhere that green algae can't be, so so we're safe from green algae. We don't have to worry about seaweed, so we're fine there. This should be extremely doable. We just have to get to fall. That's that's fine. We have to sleep through one more season. We're no strangers to that. It's all good. It's all good. Unfortunately, it's not available in on Ginger Island. Otherwise, that would be a smart play. But if we can finally fish our very own eel after all this time, the legacy of Craig has never died, and finally we get to... Get to catch our own Craig. Yeah, sleep sleeping is easy. Sleeping is is no problem at all. We've we've mastered the art of it. The art of the sleep. I do still want to go outside every day, at least just to get my if 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 ugh, if only to get my uh my screenshot for the day. Sorry, I was just so excited at the prospect of the screenshots, I got a little stuttery there. We can use the bait, bait we just made. True, our own homemade bait to go and catch our own homemade Craig. I'm also going to put this bomb away because it's, it's freaking me out just having it in my inventory like that. I can't think of any reason we would need to stop in summer. We're not going to go to any of the festivals. We're not gonna do anything else here. I think we pretty much just just keep on sleep, and we'll 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 pop over and check the the state of the crops um, towards the end of the season. But otherwise, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm not even gonna worry about putting away the the goodies from the statues just for now. I'll just let them stack in my inventory, and because we have inventory space for right now, so we might as well take advantage of it. 
and let the thing stack and then just put them all away in one fell swoop. Do we have a rain totem? That's a good call, actually. I don't know if we do have a rain totem. It's not the end of the world if we have to wait for a rainy day in fall. We are not still bamboo pole, no. We actually have the fiberglass rod now. We're a high enough fishing level. Uh, we have one rain totem. We can make it work. Could we use the rain totem for for an eel? Is the is the ultimate question, honestly. Or is that rain totem? It's I mean, they're still rare enough to come across. Like we, the only way we can get rain totems right now is via skull cavern dives. We can't craft them yet, and it's going to be a long time before we can. So I don't know. I don't know, because it's going to rain naturally and fall at some point. There's there's no doubt in my mind about that. You'd rather wait until the 27th to use it than reset the next day until we catch Craig. Dreg. <laughs> my only issue with that is that if we get another, you know, another goal that we would want to be in fall for then we kind of kind of wasted the season, right? I mean, we probably get rain before we get to the end of the season anyway, so it's not the end of the world, but... Meow. Let's check the weather. Once we get to fall, can it, can it rain on the first day in fall if you use a rain totem? I feel like the answer to that is no. I feel like it can't ever rain on the first day of a season, even if it is a, uh... Even if you use a rain totem, right? That's what my instinct is telling me. But I've never really put it to the test. You've been through fall with no rain whatsoever while playing. It can happen for sure, but it's it's unlikely to say the least. What do I have to save a rain totem for? I guess that's a fair point. What would I be saving a rain totem for if not for like a rainy day fish? Is there a good reason to hold on to it? I guess not. I guess when you put it that way. Oh, marriage. That's true. That's true. In order to buy the mermaid's pendant, it, ne it does need to be raining. At least with that one, though. Well, I guess it. I guess it would be useful if we were to, tr if it, we happen to be in like winter, and the marriage star drop goal rolled around, because then we need to get. We need to get it then. I don't know, we can probably... I mean, it's not like we can't go Skull Cavern diving pretty easily, right? Like, we're we're pretty fine as far as staircases and stuff go. So if we really need to go get more Rain Totems, we, we have a reason to do so. And it's been a long time since we've been to Skull Caverns, like, to begin with. So we might as well take the advantage, of, take the opportunity if we can. So I think I probably will just use the Rain Totem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use... I'm going to go to... I mean, we'll sleep until fall first. Fall first, it can't be raining even if you use a rain totem. That has been confirmed by chat. Um, happy birthday, Alex. And then I'll check the weather report to see if it's raining naturally on the second. And if it's not, then we'll use the rain totem. I think that's, that's my current plan. Put a pin in it. We're locking it in. Put it up on the Trello board. We're going to do it. It's catching an eel hard. It shouldn't be hard once we actually get to a situation where you can cook, where we can hook an eel. The eel is a, is one of the fish I know is patterned pretty much by heart. It is, it is an extremely distinct pattern in my brain, so I don't think I'll have an issue with actually with actually catching one once I get to the situation where I need to be. The only pro I mean honestly the biggest problem is going to be or the biggest uh factor is going to be 
waiting until 4 p.m. in order to be able to catch it. That's going to be a little... It's going to take a little bit of time, but I mean, look at what we're doing right now. We're, we're killing time just fine, right? Hello, Casey. Hello, hello. Welcome on in. What are we planting in fall? The sunflowers will remain through fall. As long as the... If we... It, well, here... Mm, do we want to let the Junimos harvest? Because if we let them harvest, that'll get the star fruit. But they'll also get some of the sunflowers, which we probably don't want, right? We can definitely leave the... We, I, I wouldn't mind having the star fruit... Or sorry, the sunflowers stick around for a little while. Harvest the star fruit? What, like harvest it myself? <laughs> I think that's too much experience. Although I could use I could use some of the star fruit to help get me closer to level six farming so that we're primed and ready for that goal. We can do another border of sunflowers with corn. That's fair. <laughs> I could just plant more sunflowers. That's not the end of the world. Because we'll get more sunflower seeds out of uh, them harvesting the sunflowers anyway. Maybe not quite enough to to do a full replant, but it'll at least get us most of the way there. So yeah, that's fine. Go look at them. I'll wait for a sunny day and then we'll go look. It'll, be, it'll look nicer in the sun. Happy birthday, Sam? <laughs> Wilted starfruit would be so sad. I see where you're coming from, but devil's advocate, devil's advocate, wilted sunflowers maintain their hoed spots, so I wouldn't have to rehoe the land. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'll I'll let them harvest it. It's it's all good. Uh, we got a supply crate over there. I can probably, well, let's see what's in it. Ooh, hello, fresh. I'll come back for you. Ooh, look at that. Looking nice. Oh, I guess that's true. I could harvest them and plant sunflowers and wheat, and then... Okay, that you guys are you guys are, are thinking smart. This is very pretty, by the way. I love the starfruit-sunflower combo. This is, this is just a nice aesthetic. The Junimos roaming about, keeping them well tended to, well fed. It's very nice. Go get some... Oh, I don't have the inventory space for that sunflower honey right now. I'll come back. Get literally all the combos. I guess if I planted wheat and corn for fall, that would, that would cover all bases, wouldn't it? pumpkins are gold enough, they'd look really nice with the sunflower border. I'm picturing it in my mind, and I think you're right, Sarah. But, I, but my heart is set. I, th I feel like we gotta we gotta go with the true gold crops. Like the, like the wheat and the corn and all that stuff. We could plant wheat now. We can plant corn now, too, can't we? Isn't corn also available in summer, or am I, am I crazy? <laughs> we can plant them both. Yeah, the more I think about it, the more I like it. I think I think that's what we're gonna do. We'll let the at the end of the season, we'll let the Junimos harvest, and then we'll go and plant wheat seeds and corn seeds. We can buy the seeds now. I might as well wait until the Junimos are harvesting to go to go and buy them. You know, be a little bit time efficient that way. I just gotta make sure. I'll have to, I'll have to check. I'll have to check the weather before the because the, the it could rain on the last day of summer, and we wouldn't want that. 
So I'll just have to be cognizant of that, but that's the only thing I need to worry about, I think. And help them a bit for the XP. Yeah, I think if I harvested too much, I would definitely gain a farming level out of turn. But it would save us having to do too much work next time we get a farming level up goal, so I think I probably will harvest at least a few of them. You know, get my hands a little bit dirty. Beatrix is really starting to embrace the farming lifestyle. And it only took 26 years. It won't rain on the last day of the fest of summer because of the moonlight jellies. For some reason I thought that the moonlight jellies were on the 27th, but I think I'm thinking of Spirit's Eve. I always, I always forget like which one is on the last day, but it, it, you're right, it is Moonlight Jellies on the last day, so it won't rain. Good call. Oh, can I buy seeds on the day of the Moonlight? I think I can buy seeds on uh, on that day, right? Have a good one there, Sivan. Thank you for hanging out. Take care and rest well. I know like a lot of festival days you can't buy seeds, like the shops will be closed and stuff. But I think because it's a it's an event that's late in the day, I think shops are still open. Could be wrong about that, but either way, we'll we'll figure it out. We'll play it by ear. Also, don't forget we got a lemon stone to deliver today. Oh me! All right, let's go. I mean, <laughs> I gotta make the detour. I gotta if it, if I'm gonna make a detour or a little side quest errand for for one thing, it's gonna be this. Shops are open. Thank you, Alexion. Thank you. Thank you for the confirmation, because I legitimately just consistently, chronically forget that. Get some homies in chat for our homie. Happy birthday to you. You are amazing and beloved and cherished and precious. What is this concept you call private property? You don't need to worry about that. You just keep doing your thing. <laughs> Back's in this chest. What have I left out here? Literally nothing. This chest is just empty. Take it home, dude. It's not doing any good out here. I might as I might as well have an extra chest at home in case I in case I need it. Who's homie stealing the bombs from? Homie's got a, like a crazy high mining level. They definitely make their own bombs. They probably do steal some from Kent, that's true, but in order to have the supply that they do, I have to imagine that they, they can make their own supply. Speaking of crazy high mining levels, and also in keeping with what I was talking about earlier with the like 32-bit integer limit, being at like 2 billion or something, one thing that's always been of interest to me is that when you look in the game's code, it, it takes 15,000 experience in any given skill to reach level 10, like 15,000 total experience. But the game keeps counting experience after you get 15,000. Like, you can look in the game's code at on a farm you've played for a long time, and if you find the spot where it's like tells you how much experience you have in like farming or whatever, it could be like, you know, like 30,000, 60,000, crazy numbers. And, and, I'm, and I always thought, like, I want to get, like, a negative farming level. <laughs> like, like, wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't that be interesting? Get up to, like, 2 billion XP somehow in one of the skills, and then, like, uh... and just, and just let it, let it overflow? I don't know if it's technically stored as, as, like, a 32-bit signed integer or not. I don't know what, what data value the experience is. I would be, I would be curious to, to experiment with that. I think it would be even more implausible to do, like, in practice than, than shipping 2 billion items. But it's definitely one of those things, like, you could, you could, uh, edit the game's code and then see what happens. I'm sure probably someone's already done that, actually, but you'd need a ton of ancient fruit. Wish there was a way to see those numbers in-game. That would be handy, yeah, but I think it would kind of, uh, it, it would be a little bit too gamey for Stardew, if that makes sense. I feel like Stardew, you know, it, it kind of, 
abstracts a lot of those details, so you're not thinking about the numbers. You're thinking more about like, the actual like crops and stuff, rather than uh, and like being in the world, being immersed in the world, rather than worrying about the exact nitty gritty of how many experience points you have. There are still numbers, obviously, that you worry about, but I feel like Stardew walks a fine line. Just for fun, yeah, that's true too. I mean, you could have. There's probably mods. In fact, I'm pretty sure. There are mods that, uh, that allow you to see that stuff, but, but mods aren't for everybody either. Seems like it could be more plausible. You get multiple XP for a single harvest. I guess that's true, yeah. You, you can get quite a bit of XP for, for a harvest or for... I'm trying to think, what would be the most efficient skill to do to get 2 billion experience in? You know what it might be? Counterintuitively, it might be combat. Because Blade made that video of getting to level 10 combat in a single day using the trick at the Witch's Swamp. Where, like, you sacrifice, like, 600 kids and you just, like, kill them all as the, in their bat form in, like, a single day. And you get a bunch of experience for that. If you just did that enough times with enough children turned into, like, evil dolls. <laughs> Maybe there's... Uh, it, it would still take a long time. And I think if you put in too many... Like, if you... If you had too many kids that you turned into doves that then activated those ancient dolls that you could kill for experience, if you did that too much, it would just cause the game to be, like, unplayable because of the lag, and it would, like, crash. So you'd, got, you'd have to be careful. You'd have to find a good balance. Yeah, Blade, you, Blade used mods to, to cheat in, like, the 600 kids. Because actually getting 600 kids in Stardew Valley would take, like, a very, very long time. Like, like years. Like, literal, like, real-life years. I don't even know. It would be, it would be a monumental effort, for sure. Alright. Let's go let our Junimos harvest their little goodies to their heart's content. This was a weird thing to tune into. Welcome on in, Ivy. Don't worry about it. We're just talking about sacrificing your Stardew kids to Eldritch Gods to turn them into dubs for maximum combat XP. To overflow to negative combat levels. Kind of horrible to even think about. That's why you gotta not think about it too hard. You just gotta you gotta think about it as just as just pure numbers and math. You can't think about them as actual children in the game. Otherwise you'll get very sad very quickly. You think you tuned it at exactly the right time? You're amongst good people here, Casey. Just cleaning up shop here. I'm gonna let the Junimos harvest like pretty much all of it for the most part. I'll just keep doing- I'll go about, like, doing my traditional errands. I'll have to go and buy the seeds and stuff. And then when I come back, I'll just see how they're getting on, and I might help harvest at that point then. Yo, thank you, dead goat. Saying we have a very pretty farm. I like how our farm has turned out. It's it's definitely ramshackle. It's, it's been put together by necessity more than by uh, by choice, but... But I think we've made the we've made the most of our of our time in the randomizer for sure. It's shaped up into a very unique farm. Sapling behind the pine tree above the squirrel statue. This palindrome's got eagle eyes, if this is true. Eagle eyes, yo. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna go buy some seeds while well, we'll drop off our stuff here and then I'll go buy seeds. Put those away, sunflower honey. I don't know if I have anywhere to stack that. I do actually, yeah, I've already got one in there, perfect. Breeze growing in front of the mill, good thing we don't need to use it. Yeah, the mill is mostly there just for... just to be pretty more than anything. 
the rice on the mill must be molded. We're, we're waiting to see if it'll eventually turn into vinegar. If it'll ferment into, like, rice, rice wine vinegar or something like that. All right. We are buying wheat seeds. So I think what I want to do here, I kind of want to do, like... I kind of want to do, like, strips of each of each crop. I don't want to do... I want Because I want to do wheat and I want to do corn. They're the two remaining, like, golden crops that we haven't done yet. And I kind of want to do either, like, columns or rows. I'm not sure which, and I don't know how much we need of each in order to do that because the, the stumps kind of throw things off. Like, the logs that we can't get out of the way. So I'm just going to buy, like... I'm just going to buy 75 of each. It's going to be too many for both of them, but... It just helps, it, it works easy for my brain that way. It's a trophy mill. I feel like it's honestly probably the most common reason to build a mill, is, is just because it looks so nice. It's just a nice little farm feature to have. I think columns is a good idea. There's a rock behind some of the trees near Pi that I keep walking into. There's a rock behind some of the trees near Pi that I keep walking into. Oh, right here? This one? That's my lucky rock. How did you know? My lucky rock. It's been divined. Yeah, I think columns are the way to go because it... it then the crops, like, won't obstruct other crops. Did the Junimos... The Junimos got everything. Oh, they were kind of efficient today. Look at that. We got extra sunflower seeds. Don't mind if I do. There are sunflowers. There are sunflowers in here. We'll put those away like that. Nice floral chest. Grab the star fruit as well. Is there star fruit in any of these? Yes, indeed. All right. They get performance anxiety. It seems so. All right. I think we start with corn on this side. And then we go... We go wheat, and we just alternate like this. I think this is going to be kind of nice. It's going it's to be satisfying to me, at the very least. <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think, it's, I think it'll look pretty at the end of it. Maybe not quite as pretty as, you know, the, the, the sunflower border and all that, but it's going to have its own aesthetic to it for sure. I think we can all appreciate to a certain extent. Corn right in front of the Junima's door there. They can wake up to a nice, fresh, earthy smell of corn. It'll look nicely rustic. It's going to look like a real farm where they grow like wheat and, and corn. I guess they don't grow them in the same field, but they grow, they do grow them in, like, big, like, rows like this, don't they? Like, anytime you drive by a big corn field or wheat field, it's just, like, big, it's just, like, rows as far as the eye can see. Can I do all the wheat rows at once? I was thinking about that, of, like, doing all the wheat rows and then doing all the corn rows, but I'm a little bit worried about accidentally, you know, accidentally bleeding into another row. I feel like doing this, I'm less likely to to accidentally plant one in the wrong row, if you know what I mean. Sorry, columns, but <laughs> I've been calling them rows all this time. Technically, these are columns, but... I guess it depends on your perspective. Like, from this perspective, Beatrix sees them as rows, and then, but from our perspective, our omniscient, godlike perspective, columns all day, every day. There we go, and a couple little corn plants right on the edge there. Not too shabby. I'll bring these seeds back up to the farm with me, and, uh, and we're all set for fall already. It's rare that we get set set up for fall before fall even starts. Feels good to be ahead of the game here. Alright. Go lock it in, shall we? 
lock it in. I'll grab my rain totem as well, just in case I do need it. Maybe just holding the rain totem will be a sign to the game that it want, that I want it to rain. And then I won't need to actually use it. But at least we got it on hand in case. Just in case. Comfy vibes for sure. The true Stardew experience, being a, a wheat and corn farmer. <laughs> Alright, lock it in. Fall hath arrived. Yo, DJ Guardian, welcome on in. Good to see you. I hope you're staying warm and, and cozy as well. All right. Please, fortune teller. No, not fortune teller. Weather report. I mean, fortune teller be with me as well. We need some luck to get the rain here. It's going to be a cloud, cloudy with gusts of wind throughout the day. And it's going to rain on Ginger Island. No, I need. I didn't specify. Oh, man. The gods misheard me, but they didn't see where I was. How dare they? That's so rude. <laughs> that is so rude. Yo, Dine, I thank you for becoming a member at the Electron level, by the way. Thank you so much for the generosity and support. You unlocked a lovely suite of, of new emojis to use. And enjoy that sword as well. Careful where you, careful where you swing that thing. All right. I don't need to worry about that. Well, before I forget, I guess it's, uh, you know, rain totem it up. Why not? There we go. Clouds gather in the distance. Spooky. Looking good so far. You cannot catch eels on Ginger Island. No. It is that you can catch certain ocean fish on Ginger Island, but eels are not amongst them. Trust me, I've, I've fished enough on Ginger Islands to know what you can and ca can't catch there. You can't catch eels and you can't catch seaweed, weirdly enough. But it's all good. Now it's raining. Perfect. All right, so now we just have to wait until 4 p.m. I believe 4 p.m. Is, is the eels witching hour. Happy birthday, Penny. Yo, wouldn't it be amazing? What if we got, after we caught the eel, we got Befriend Penny, and it's literally her birthday today? Ooh. I don't know if I'd be ready for a new befriending goal quite so soon, but if we were to get it, <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't say no. Certainly would not say no. All right. And now we wait. Nice to join you in chat from Ontario. Yo, Ontario, nice. Fellow Canadian in the mix. Yeah, hope you're having a good day. Just normal debris clearing? Do we have any gold melons saved? That's a good, that's a good question. We do, we do need to plan for Penny because our current method for... Uh... For befriending people is not going to work for her. All those iridium quality rabbit's feet. So I'm sure I'm sure we have other options, but uh, we're going to have to have to get more creative when it comes to Penny. Can I even say no? That's a that's a valid point. <laughs> Whether I want the goal or not, the randomizer is going to bequeath what it wants onto me. You know, we did we did a little debris clearing in the Cindersap Forest not long ago. I feel like I need to do debris clearing up in the railroad. Last time I went to the spa, I I noticed that it was pretty run down. Not that we go to the railroad all that often, but just it being left in that state makes me sad. So I'm gonna go pay a little bit of attention to that. I think. Yeah, I don't think the movie theater debris is, is too bad either. I think we're pretty on top of that one. Although I have been sleeping a lot, so so who's to say? Put an emerald in the in the crystallariums for her. That's probably a smart move. I'm trying to think, we do have one gold quality melon. Save that for her birthday if we get the chance. Coffee and crab cakes. Don't mind if I do. Great minds think alike, Miss Palindrome. 
I feel like in real life, coffee and crab cakes would not be a good combination. Like you, it's just like too strong of flavors to be to be intermingling like that. It's four whole hay in her inventory, and I'm proud of it. <laughs> All right, yeah. Look, what the heck is going on here? Get these. Let's let's. Let's just start dealing with this. I should have brought some bombs, honestly. <laughs> bombs could have could have gone a long way here, but we gotta bide our time anyway, so let's get down and dirty for a minute. Oh, it's true, Penny does love diamonds, doesn't she? Wait, does she love diamonds? I'm trying to remember now. I feel like I should know Penny's Penny's g gifts like inside and out, because she was a she was, she was our wife in the Gift-a-thon way back in the day, right? Because of her her love for artifacts more than anything else. Also loves poppies. That's true. We, we actually probably have a decent amount of poppies in our, in our chests. Why not bomb everything? Because we need to wait until 4 p.m. regardless, so... Okay, we're, we're, we're definitely not... Letting this stand, though. Imagine getting to get finally getting perfection at the end of all this. We come up here and this and the path to the summit is blocked by debris. I don't think so. Yeah, we need to bide our time until 4 p.m. for the eel anyway, so I don't see a reason not to just you know do it manually here. Plus, I'm lazy. I don't want to go back for the bombs. That's really the the actual reason at the end of the day. an illustration of how long it took us to get perfection. That the whole mountain has been overgrown with debris. That would be quite a testament. Anything else up, like, behind here? Not particularly. This this east side's looking rather troubled, though. Yeah, maybe I should... Maybe I should use bombs. <laughs> Just looking at how much stuff there is. I don't even have any... I'm going to run out of energy here. Well, I guess I have the spa literally right there, so... That's not the, the worst thing in the world. Spa break. I think we can go a little bit further with the debris clearing here before we have to worry about a spa break. Get down to the nitty-gritty of our energy. And by then, that'll, it'll probably be just about time to start heading towards the ocean anyway, for the eel. Maybe it'll shape up nicely here. Homie's nearby, too. Oh, we could just go buy bombs from Homie, honestly. I'm committed now. I'm committed to the bit. I'm st I am starting to feel exhausted. All right, fair enough. Earned a little reprieve here, Beatrix. One more rock. All right. We got most of the debris, at least early. Well, probably at least, you know, like half the debris. <laughs> I'm so used to walking so slow through the, the spa. I didn't realize the speed buffs would affect you in the spa, too. That's kind of great. I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna say, like, the power stride. She's power walking her way to that to that spa. She really needs the rest. You always plant 50 pine trees up here, just over a stack of wood when chopped down. That's gotta be pretty satisfying to do that. She's gonna slip and fall. Sorry, Beatrix is built different, but but definitely a good PSA. Don't don't walk that fast near the side of a pool. <laughs> it is uh, it is deleterious to your health. Don't don't run by the pool. They're, they put up those signs for a reason. All right. Let's go. Let's go drop off all the all the goodies that we got here. 
and then make our way, make them our way downtown to the beach to catch a new eel friend. The water moves out of the way for her. She won't slip. She is the queen of the valley. The water's gonna not let her slip if it knows what's good for her. Or for it. <laughs> Alright. The rest of this goes in my mining fridge over here. I don't have any geodes, huh? Crazy. I guess I did open them all for earth crystals not too long ago. Have a good one there, Oceana. See you after you're done your, your dinner. As long as the stream's still going here. Alright. Queen Bee Boss. Not gonna do that for you, Clint. You can you can go mine your own minerals. What else what else do you even do? You just stand in your store all day. Go out and do a little bit of mining. I mean he must at some point, I guess. Where else does he get the ores? I guess he could like ship them in, but alright. We're not worried about seaweed, which is nice, but I'd still like to get the eel as fast as I can here, so. Fingers crossed. You know, thank you for the wholesome message there, Jay. Thank you for the smiles. I'm, a, I'm always happy to provide. I'm always happy to provide a cozy, happy, fun place for the community to hang out. And the fact that you guys enjoy being here, experiencing these silly little Stardew adventures alongside me, I'm, I'm always super grateful for it. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your, of your, of your life in some capacity here. Not an eel. I'm telling you, the eel is extremely distinct. We're gonna know when we see it. At least I'll know it when I see it. <laughs> you you might not. Maybe you don't have this encyclopedic knowledge of fish in your brain like I do. And that's probably for the best. I'm happy for you in that regard. That, like, 10% of your brain is not dedicated to Stardew fish knowledge. But I gotta take advantage of it when I can. That's not an eel, I don't think. I'm, I'm gonna say that's not an eel. It had me fooled for a second, but I don't think that was it. I, I don't know what that was, but it wasn't an eel. I think it was. I think the game was trying to gaslight me into thinking it was an eel, but but I'm standing my ground. That was not an eel. Similarly, that's an, also not an eel. Yo, Ophir, thank you for the fifty. DKK, whatever the currency may be, thank you. Great content, keep it up. I'm glad, I'm I'm super happy. Thank you so much. Thank you for the support and the generosity and for indulging me with your first super on live stream. Thank you. I am humbled. Glad you're enjoying the content. The classic Stardew fishing content. Thank goodness we already had seaweed. You're, you're not wrong, yeah. It's so nice not to have to worry about seaweed anymore. It's just, it's just such a breath of fresh air. I don't like, I don't love getting the extra experience. Every, every little bit of experience we get closer to level 6 is always a little bit icy in my brain. Okay, so you can stop anytime. Presses me out. Like, we're probably going to be fine. Danish Krone. Ooh. There's so many currencies out there. I love learning about them. And I just love learning in general. That is our eel. That should be our eel. I'm pretty sure. I'm not going to go for the treasure chest because that's extra experience that I don't need to worry myself with. Boom. Eel get. Perfect. Craig. Craig's cousin... Krog, <laughs> well, welcome to welcome to the family. A long, slippery little fella. You love to see it, Master Angler, baby. Hold on, I should go. Well, even if I rolled the, if even if I rolled to befriend Penny Goal at this point, that would be actually so sad because I don't think I can get to her to give her a gift anymore in the day. But I should still go roll a new goal regardless. 
What's up, Krog? <laughs> Krog, Pog. We got it. We got the eel. Eel unlocked. Look at this fishing collection. It's shaping up nicely. Ooh. Looking pretty. Looking fresh. We still have, like, more than half the fish left to catch, but... <laughs> All right. Let's go see if we get another one to catch right here, I guess. The randomizer does enjoy his fishing goals from time to time. Eliot, I love it. All right. We're pushing up against the time that I'm that I'm going to have to end the stream pretty soon, chat, so that I can go and like get something to eat and get ready for work and all that stuff. If the randomizer is feeling benevolent, there's still a chance. There's still a chance for goal 200 here. We're at 197, currently going for 198 with, drum roll please. Do you hear my drum roll? Do you, I, try, I tried my best, I tried my best, anyway. Be friend Harvey, no, 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 no. Nothing against Harvey, but that's, that definitely puts a damper on things getting, to, you know, we're gonna have to wait until next week for goal 200 apparently. Rip. Dream dead. It's okay. <laughs> it's fine. When's Harvey's birthday? Does anyone know this off the top of their head? I want to. I want to know if our birthday luck is still as atrocious as it has been. Winter birthday. Winter fourteenth. We should be able to utilize that. Then, like we're we're only we're early on in fall here. It's only eight hearts for him, it's true, yeah. It, it, this will be a quicker befriending goal, especially if we have the birthday at, at our disposal. He dislikes fall movies. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> I'll be getting less friendship, but that just means I'll be able to... I mean, the, the, the birthday should get us, should overflow us. I think we'll be all right. We can give him iridium-quality wine. <laughs> that, could be, that could be a unique twist on things. We'll see. We'll cross that bridge next time on the randomizer. For now, I do think that's gonna have to be have to be it for the stream. I'm gonna go ahead and lock in the day here. Lock in. We'll go put we'll go put Krog in a in his in his new home, wherever that might be. And then we will wrap things up here. Twenty years in, the farmer starts giving Harvey premium aged wine. <laughs> we we wanted to give him the wine all along, but it just took that long in order for us to to get a, a high enough uh, for to, to age long enough. We're not giving Harvey iridium ancient fruit wine. I don't see why not. It's a fun time. Y'all look at him squirming. He's squirming and squiggling in there with the best of them. I love that for you, Krog. Perfect. Give him one for his birthday. I guess, you know, maybe that that probably makes sense, yeah. Alright, I can put away the fishing rod as well. No, don't need that for the time being. Krog is awesome. Krog is Pog. Like, we have 155... Iridium quality bottles of wine. Surely we can sacrifice, you know, one or two of those for Harvey. Harvey Harvey's a good enough guy. He deserves it. He's been looking after the town's medical needs for the past like quarter of a century. <laughs> Alright. Well that is gonna be it for me for now. We'll be back with more randomizer shenanigans. Not tomorrow. I will be streaming tomorrow, but we're actually going to do a bit of a special stream tomorrow where we'll be watching back the Master Angler Challenge video that I posted last month. Pretty much like a month ago, almost to the day. Um, will be watching that back, and I'll be... We'll be watching it together, and I'll be giving you sort of an insightful... As insightful as I can creator commentary on the creation process behind that video. And, and all the little, you know, little stories and tips and whatever I can whatever I can muster off the top of my head while I'm watching it. I've got lots of things I could talk about 
during that video. So it's probably going to be a long-ish stream, given that the video itself is an hour and a half, and I've got a decent amount I could talk about. So hope to see you there for that one. If, you, if you're interested, and if not, then hope to see you next week for more of Beatrix's shenan shenanigans. Befriending Harvey and beyond. Until then, though, I'm going to get the heck out of here. Thank you all for watching. Be good to one another and be good to yourselves. And this is Argon Matrix signing on out. Thank you and good night, everybody. Bye-bye.